expecting you to be like, oh, we don't want Howard back on the show, you know? So You look uh, yeah. very much like someone else I know. Really? <laughs> That's unlucky for them. <laughs> Amy, uh, Converse Contender, Does, doesn't he look very much like Converse Contender? He does look a little bit like Converse Contender. That's funny. <laughs> I'd love to check out who that is. Converse Contender. Funny enough, Tom, you remind me of a, a friend I have here in Spain. Cool. Spain. That's where you're from? Well, I'm English, but um, I know a Dutch guy here and he looks to spit an image of you. Cool. <laughs> it's actually, he's, he's actually me. I just time travel, so I live in multiple timelines. <laughs> what was the guy's name? Converse? Converse Contender. Contender. A YouTuber, yeah? Yeah, he's on Twitch and in Discord, and he's been on Modern Day Debate. Shit, I'll check him out. Just setting you guys up in OBS, and oh, we're good to go. Did you, you got the link, Amy? So I looked in chat. Would Did you send it in chat or for email? Email. Email. Gotcha. I am live on my end, just so you guys know. Sounds good. Hello, Internet World. We're about to go live. Uh, but you're going to be sharing this link on your end, right? Or did you? No, I've, I'm, I'm on my telephone. So I thought if I send you the link, uh, you can play it from, from your end and just mute me. All right. Give me one second to Give that. Give it. No, no, no. Hello, guys in the chat. How's it going? That's pretty close. Let's go with that. What is going on? What is our value? Oh, radius, radius of the earth. That's what R is. Okay. Everything is working. And now it just exploded. It exploded. I don't. I feel like this is a James issue. <laughs> no, it's just not loading this. The window capture. I was doing it. Come on, OBS. What you doing to me? Uh, Randy, this is live. I'm just streaming it on my end too. So I'm on time. James is late as usual. So that's that's the problem. To me. No, it's all James' fault. You can always blame James. Amy, you're just doing your job. You're supposed to be late to like make sure to not not make James look bad. See, it's all making sense now. I was gonna do something. Mm. Uh, reviews, ad source, video, capture device, ad source, PS4, ad source, there we go. Derp, derp. How do I, how, how, wait, 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 how do I do this? What is over there? There we go. Covering the chat though. Chat, 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 chat. 
There you go. Yeah, Lacey, we, me and you are both on time. James's modern day debate is always late. Yes, the mug is on sale. TJ, it, link in the description. My mug is in the description uh, and merch under mugs. Oh, I got a, I got a, I got a message, a super chat, something. Hey, Ash Media, how's it going? Does this surrounding space make the Western Hemisphere look fat? Yes, your jeans make your butt look fat. Do I play Sea of Thieves? No, I've never played Sea of Thieves. Not yet. Sea of Thieves. I think it's on my list of stuff. Sea of Thieves. Search Sea of Thieves. Uh, is that is that a, is that on PS4? Um, Gamefly. Sea of Thieves. Gamefly. Gamefly. Five out of ten. Ooh. Oh, it got a bad review. Hey, Howard. I'm just figuring out how we're going to share your screen. When I did it, OBS was not happy. What if Tom did it? That's uh, what I'm thinking. Say what now? What, it just might be that, Tom, I might need you to screen share when it's his turn. You mean I play the video on my computer and screen share it? Yes, as if you wanted to be the one showing the video. Oh. Why? I'm I'm on a telephone, so I can't screen share. So I've I'll give me one more in. chance to try it if you want. Um, is there a video to it or is it just audio? Can you just play the audio? It's um, it's a video and audio, my aud voice audio. Because I'm, I'm scared I won't be able to keep in time if I try and do it live. I've, I've tried to cram as much in 20 minutes as possible. So take notes. Let's see, I might have it. I'm seeing it. Full screen. So it's sharing it on Zoom. What? Question is, can I get it to share? To give you a heads up, James, 
uh, sorry, to give you a heads up, um, <laughs> Tom. He's transitioning, it happens. <laughs> Tom, uh, it, I, my angle is more um, the mind that we're being brainwashed um, instead of uh, tackling just is it flat or is it round? It's, it's my argument's more of the attitude of the globe earth believers the attitude of the globe earth believers that that go as far to <laughs> to debate it on youtube and i was originally i was uh, asking conspiracy cats if you remember to debate me and he kept uh, making excuses so I, i'm glad that you um i doubt he would make excuses because he that's what he does also he does debates just like i do so he probably debates trust, you. trust me i've been asking him to rematch for nearly a year <laughs> and he actually agreed and then went back on it so yeah thank you for agreeing I'm actually glad you did because I figured that you're more philo philosophical from seeing some of your other debates. So I figured it'll True. hopefully be a bit more mature and less. Uh... Sure, yeah, I'm willing to go down the. You want to change the topic slightly from flat earth to like mentality stuff? That's fine. I don't care. Yeah, I figured you, 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 when you said that you, you'd debate me, I thought, ooh. How can I make it more suitable and more interesting? I checked out some of the debates and I thought, yeah, let's try and go down a bit of a deeper angle to see uh, what's behind your motives, what's behind mine. <laughs> All right, I think I have this working, or at least most of the screen. So that'll be good. We're about to go live, guys. Sorry about that. I just had to get my screen share for OBS. You got the audio, yeah? Uh, do you hear this? Do you hear that? Uh, no. I don't. What? Wonderful. Okie dokie. Hold on one second. Casting is garbage in this game. I don't like casting at all. That's why I don't use it. Cats is too afraid um, to debate him. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. He's a pussy cat. Sharon Chrome. Scaredy cat. Pancakes versus gotcha, muffins. Gotcha. Pancakes, always pancakes. All right, how about now? More and more, I see alternative worldviews get some yep. beautiful. All Thank right, you, guys, I think we are good to go. It's nice. basically going to be 30 seconds of music, and then I'll give a short opener, and I will hand it off to you, Howard, for your opener. Tom for his opener, and then we'll go into that open discussion. Cool. Uh, right. I don't like the beam effect that much. It kind of sucks, to be honest. A straight line. Show it to you. This is the beam effect. Like, meh. I just disappeared. Cool. All right.
All right. We are going live in three, two, one. Are we live? Woo Why, yes, we are, and welcome everyone to Modern Day Debate. We're a neutral platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more juicy debates, Feel free to like and subscribe, including tonight's debate on Flat Earth with both of our interlocutors, T-Jump and Howard, here to help us find some answers. And if you enjoy what either of them have to say tonight, both of our guest links are in the description below. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Howard for their 10 to 20 minute opening statement. Hi, Amy. Hi, Tom. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, if you could just play my video, that would be brilliant. It explains everything. Thank you. Oh. Sounds good. More and more, I see all. Make sure I hit. Alternative worldviews get suppressed while mainstream media platforms encourage us to trust the science and promote that we follow the new norm. But might this kind of marketing and propaganda be harmful? I don't have any problem with people having their own beliefs, but if our decisions are subconscious... Did you pause it? I think I lost connection. Did Amy, is it? No, it's paused on me as well. Uh, I think Amy froze. God damn it. Okay, so that froze. Let's rejoin then. Open. Well, that was weird. Uh... Is Amy back? <laughs> no. <laughs> so Amy froze while playing it. Do you have uh, your video uploaded to YouTube? Yeah, it's the first video on my last uploads. That, that's unhelpful. Can you tell me the name of the YouTube channel? Howard George Stirrer. And the name of the video is Global Fanaticism. 
Or if you search global fanaticism, I think it's four or five down on the YouTube um, list. Instagram, YouTubes. Uh, global skeptic. What's it called? Global fanaticism. Yeah, it's the first one. More and. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I just have to wait for Amy to get back. Um... While waiting, I'm just going to go gaming. Uh, can you message her to make, like, email? Make sure she's coming back. Sure. I'll have to just leave the call a sec. I think. Mm -hmm. Do you have a computer or just your phone? I've got a computer, but I'm just using my phone today. I thought Wait, I'd keep it simple. Can you, like, email her with your computer? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to turn it on. Just two secs. Thank you for the super chat, Jacob. Appreciate it. Okay. I've sent her an email. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, there she is. She's back now. Oh, cool. Uh, can you hear us, Amy? No, I can't hear you. Existence of Bigfoot. Uh, Okay, can you guys hear me? That was fun. Went live. <laughs> Had a blue screen. All right. Let's see if we can get this back live. All right. I will and try to start over. I'll do it. I'll try to do it from my end. Uh, go back up to interviews. Yeah, Amy, I'll, I'll try to do the share screen thing you like, like you suggested before. That okay. Work. Uh, this guy down to there. more and more. I see. More and more, I see alternative worldviews get suppressed while mainstream media platforms encourage us to trust the science and promote that we follow the new norm. But might this kind of market more and more? I'm going to compress it down to 15 minutes, if you don't mind. That sounds good. Woody, how's it going? Skull, Skully Night, Skull Night. TJ, yeah, this, this is the behind the scenes, this is the typical behind the scenes of modern day debate. We get like a half an hour of just hanging out, waiting for it to start. That's right, we're just sending love. And okay, guys, I'm about to start streaming again. Try number two. We need an ad hoc only debate. Uh, I think I've had a few of those. That was my Jay Dyer debate with an ad hoc only debate. All right, let's see what happens when we press start streaming again. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to try this again. Oh, 
my in three two one Welcome everyone to Modern Day Debate. We're a neutral platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more juicy debates, don't forget to like and subscribe, including tonight's debate on Flat Earth with both of our interlocutors, T-Jump and Howard, here to help us find some answers and if you enjoy what either of them say tonight both of our guest links are in the description below with that i'm gonna hand it over to howard for their 10 to 20 minute opening statement thank you amy and uh, thank you for having me on um if you could play my video that would be brilliant it pretty much says my whole argument I need this one. Alrighty. I see alternative worldviews get suppressed. Can you, guys hear? Can you guys hear it just to be sure? Give me one second to transfer onto... No. Well, I'm not playing it yet. Um, okay. Free media platforms can you hear this? I'm playing it now. Can you hear it? promote that we follow the new norm, but might this kind of... No. Hmm. I don't know. How do you make the audio work, Amy? Because I, I don't know. Um, did you press the make button, uh, sound button when you first shared it? I don't know what that means. So when you screen share, you have to make sure that button is clicked. Uh, I don't know what that means. Stop sharing. Give me one Screen second. share, optimize, share sound. Got it. Found it. Share sound. I'm Thanks, just trying man. to adjust this. Marketing and propaganda. Did you hear it that time? It was a bit fast. <laughs> well, that's how I'm going to compress it, so yeah. It, it'll it be too fast, Tom, and it's... it's it'll be fine. Uh, it, it'll be ridiculous. <laughs> more and more, I see alternative worldviews get suppressed, while mainstream media platforms encourage us to trust the science and promote that we follow the new norm. But might this kind of marketing and propaganda be harmful? I don't have any problem with people having their own beliefs, but if our decisions are subconsciously open to suggestion, are our thoughts even our own? We're influenced by everything that our senses experience, and we tend to attract what we focus on. So I'm concerned that we're being hypnotized to conform, to become a stereotype product of our environment, and to discourage constructive criticism and new ideas. There are many ways to plant a seed. There's the analytical approach, distracting with a challenging task, causing you to become open to suggestion of the actual message. There's delivering a message or suggesting an idea through a story or character that you can relate to personally and then feel like you've come to your own conclusion. Sometimes we're triggered by direct suggestion, normally of two results, an extreme pro and an extreme anti, either to maintain a paradox or to introduce a new idea, also known as the Hegelian dialectic. You say using math and physics? That is an alarm to the geekiverse that we must rise up and, and counteract these forces from the dark side that are out there. We see how people change character when they're given certain roles or labels. It seems like we would know from the social experiments that pointing out differences only adds fuel to the fire. Instead of focusing on what makes us the same, we tend to doubt ourselves when we hear multiple people or even the same person multiple times. So when I realized that I could see streetlights 20 miles away at water level that should have been obstructed by roughly 80 meters of vertical drop, I decided to offer 10,000 euros on national Spanish television. Now, due to the pandemic, I've had to take the offer down, but I think I've proved my point. Now, when you look on the news, Please pay attention to how many spinning globes you'll see at the start with the countdown. I don't believe that it's pure coincidence that you can find 666 so many times in the globe mathematics. Maybe if we weren't hypnotised with false beliefs, we wouldn't be so confused and find it so difficult to deal with some of the other problems in society. Economists sometimes say that space is curved, or that the universe is finite but unbounded. Whatever they're talking about, 
Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean, absolutely flat. And that we live perfectly enough in a flat land. Now, if we look at the shadow of the three dimensional in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. So instead of debating beliefs, maybe we should keep experimenting and until verified, keep an open mind. Although we think of hand gestures for just sign language, they're also known as mudras. And it appears that they have a psychological effect on their audience, as politicians and royalty seem very, very keen and consistent on using them. So my concern is that if we are wrong about being on the globe, spinning on our axis, orbiting the sun, and the sun orbiting the Milky Way, these three movements could act like three different hypnotic spirals, casting us not only deeper into a trance, but also making us more susceptible to more deception and manipulation. But these guys are told how to pose, which means that there's definitely interest from the music industry and Hollywood to promote these things. Old habits? Or maybe we're just being cursed with bad fashion. It would be crazy to assume that all of these celebrities are consciously promoting Satanism, but it would be just as crazy to assume that none of them are in secret societies or satanic cults, when we know that people in high places have trust issues. So obviously, for you to have such spotlight and influence over the general public, the only way that they could trust you is to have dirt on you. Maybe the conspiracy theorists were wrong about being chipped, but the specific biblical reference to the mark of the beast system, it's either prophecy or mockery, but it's definitely not a coincidence. We see numbers are important They're everywhere. And if we don't see the pattern in nature, or if we don't see the pattern in a language, that's our own problem. We won't be able to play the game as well as those that do. I was a member of a secret society, and now I regret it, because I see a lot of good people being misled to uphold a platform that helps evil thrive. And it allows the network to plant agents in all types of fields and leave their symbols in plain sight for those that see. To really just mock and um, negative prime the public to feel that they'll get the similar experience if they're silly enough to question any of the mainstream narratives. Even if our conscious mind doesn't acknowledge it at the time, we can get influenced by flash imagery, reversed audio recordings, and there's also many artists like Taylor Swift who have been known to release subliminal messages in the high frequencies. Not all Satanists believe in a horny red fallow, just like not all Satanists are into sex magic, cannibalism and blood rituals. Some are just philosophically anti-Christian. You try and warn people of danger, nobody can take you seriously. And you're saying, well, look at all the evidence everywhere, you know? I mean, you've got to be blind not to see it. So I'm pretty convinced that people have been hypnotised not to see it. And I keep seeing these YouTubers in every country. There's these pro-narrative YouTubers and celebrities who are also indicating that they also have other affiliations. Like I say, logos of Hollywood and even NASA, but maybe because the best lies are 99% true. We're seeing a lot of ancient math and symbolism in modern religion and technology. We're seeing a lot of ancient ideologies in modern constructions. I'm seeing mainstream media telling people not to investigate and research for themselves, but rather to just trust mainstream media. And this is causing a lot of division because they're installing different beliefs in us. So I, I think the best thing is just to go out and talk to people and have real conversations because you can learn from every interaction. I met my friend Mike, who's got me into biogeology, and he's been showing me some of the 50 characteristics that exactly correlate with the anatomy of an elephant of gigantic proportions, which has got us on the idea that, yeah, maybe there was titans like the Bible and the Quran and many other ancient cultures have spoken about, which is, you know, maybe we're looking at it all our lives and we're just ignoring it because we've been brainwashed with spirals to, to just think that, you know, we've evolved from some Big Bang. And we can see all around us that water erosion doesn't always add up because the channels are sometimes going horizontal and fractal. And sometimes we can look at what's supposed to be water erosion and see correlations with the histology of a lung, of a giant. And then we see remnants of giants in architecture and uh, carvings that relate to the fallen angels. We see correlations with technology all over the earth in ancient architecture. And we're told that it's just all decorative and uh, religious, yet we see too many connections with power and energy generation. So it really looks like there was a lot more understanding of the Earth before than there is now, because there seems to be way too many coincidences for this just to be laughable. You can see star forts that not only have amazing construction, but they resemble snowflakes and crop circles. So yeah, maybe we just don't see these things because we've got cognitive dissonance and selective attention due to having spirals installed in our subconscious. Maybe we don't see all of the celebrities promoting satanic rituals, just making out as if it's comedy and satire, yet the theme is constant and it seems to be being taken very seriously, if not by the artists themselves, at least by the industries that employ them. According to the FBI files, the paedophile networks tend to use logos that include spirals. Evil, whatever you want to call it. It's intelligent. It's smart. And it's invisible. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have a race. It doesn't have a religion. It has no politics. It's an invisible snake that while it is planning to make its attack, it is thinking to itself, I am going to divide my enemy into smaller, less strong groups, and then I'm going to make them hate each other so that it's easier to take them down. That we do tend to prefer comfort over the necessities 
See, if everybody was honest and admitted that nobody actually knows for certain, then maybe we wouldn't be so quick to follow other people's ideas. It doesn't seem healthy that politicians are now broadcasting their affiliation to these ideologies of witchcraft, nature, and calling it art, when we know that the United Nations has been founded literally with the beliefs that the world is overpopulated, when we know that it's only overcrowded in cities. For this reason, there's lots of conspiracy theorists that are very concerned with the way that the world's going, and the, the people that are guiding us there might not be so trustworthy, especially when we can see that the entertainment industry were able to predict so much of the current world events and especially when we can see way too far for the dimensions given. Here's a video from my friend Vika, who could see thousands of miles away. And if you're still not convinced, then please check out the beautiful Bolivian salt flats, Salar de Uyuni, where they've even sent people from Oxford Academic to measure over 100 kilometers and there's no curvature. I mean, come on, there's supposed to be 781 meters of vertical drop over that distance. To ignore that would make you literally a science denier. And you don't have to be religious to acknowledge that there's over 200 verses in the Bible, at least nine ayahs from the Quran, and loads of carvings that all suggest that we are being lied to. I'm not convinced by seeing Buzz Aldrin on the moon, or by seeing the International Space Station fly above me. I would expect that the suits would not let x-rays through, and that they'd also not be so flexible. To be honest, I was more convinced by Michael Jackson's moonwalk, because I've seen Argos harnesses for adults, and I've also seen commercials and hairspray to get the floating effect. I'm not convinced that the shuttles can go at the speeds that they say, or that the people could even withstand the speeds that they claim. So there's lots of conundrums with the globe model being different than every other so-called planet in outer space, and there's also lots of contradictions in their own official statements. And you have to laugh at how easy it would be to fool people. But don't take my word for it, look at the official data. Voyager's cameras, foreign scientists, spectacular close-up views of the great red spot. A storm, three times the diameter of Earth, raging in Jupiter's atmosphere. Voyager atmospheric scientists, Dr. Andrew Ingersoll. The great red spot is a counterclockwise rotating storm sort of like a hurricane that has persisted for over three centuries. I'm not buying it. You know, it, what we see in reality and what was shown on television, it just doesn't add up. Especially when you see the same cloud patterns from one year to another, then you should really start to question the integrity of your trusted sources. This is the GOES goes west. Uh, satellite. Those clouds right in the middle, that line that's going horizontally across, they're not moving, they're not changing, they're not disappearing. Clouds disappear when it rains, Michael, you know all this. Please be honest. Be honest. You're not well, I would going. say it's probably not raining at the time there. This is the Discover satellite. Let's just watch some clouds that you're believing in. There you go. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so here we go, we have the GOES East satellite. That doesn't look very realistic to me, Michael. Please, you should be able to admit this. Be honest. Um, so this is this is the Himawari 8, which is in also geostationary uh, orbit. Again, no cloud movements. Oh, what a silly mistake. You think these guys would be better than us. Look at the official imagery that we're being shown. And if some are fake, then why would they not all be fake? Why would they need to fake any? We can go to other official footage, and we seem to see the same problem. And if some are fake, then why would they not all be fake? Why would they need to fake any? Why is the moon so dull in certain imagery, but we see it so bright? Why can't we find a real photo of a whole country? I recommend look for a country like the United Kingdom, or France, or Spain, and you'll see that there's vast differences. There's absolutely no way that we could see such change with such detail but not see cities, and it's, it's, it's laughable. They even admit that they're using animations, and now they're admitting that the moon is inside our atmosphere. We can't just ignore the idea of Earth's atmosphere being next to a vacuum when every experiment that we observe shows that gas pressure needs a container. We also shouldn't ignore that a railgun can use a laser beam and shoot a target 100 miles away without having to account for curvature, or the Coriolis effect. Just like a helicopter can hover for hours in one position, or the Red Bull skydive could spend three hours above New Mexico without having to worry about landing in a different place. And you can clearly tell that they faked the curvature with a fisheye lens. Yeah, every every lens. Yeah, it every lens. Some so, distortion. So, so there, there is some distortion. Yes. So when someone claims that they've seen a curvature, ask for a photo. And just remember that even the Virgin Galactic showed convex and concave. So I recommend doing practical experiments, which is the best scientific method I know of. But many people just ignore practical experiments and depend on the different explanations as excuses for seeing what we see in reality. We all can learn about the phenomena of light refraction and mirages. When we make repeated observations, we can observe that the horizon is an apparent location due to atmospheric refraction. We see things get stretched and squashed and the horizon being an apparent location due to optical illusions due to atmospheric conditions. But what we don't see, we don't see any distortion to objects on a clear day when we do see too far. And we can all, so I'm not buying that it's a mirage. I'm not buying that it's a mirage when National Geographic and the Discovery Channel claiming to have proven curvature when their own footage clearly shows that they are mistaken or intentionally dishonest, blatantly reading off a script or always promoting official narratives and ridicule practical experiments can be in the trending section. The science speaks for itself. You can either believe in what you've been told, but look for an explanation in a book, or you can make the experiment yourself. This field of research could tell us a lot more about the nature of our reality. I mean, cymatics is like looking into another realm. It's like looking into the other dimension, taking a glimpse into another dimension. They're already using it to try and decipher what dolphins are saying and they're building languages. They're also using sound to visualize what dolphins can see. People ask if the Earth is flat, what's underneath? There are many explanations and even experiments that can demonstrate how alternative worldviews could be possible. At the bottom surface of the liquid, it floats in place, just like it would at the top surface. The effect does depend on the system being shaken hard enough, though, and the right frequency. If the vibrations get too small and gentle, the ball and the liquid will eventually fall. But get the shaking right, and that is how science can lead to a boat floating upside down on a levitating layer of liquid. Just like the game Pac-Man, where you go off one side of the screen and appear on the other, different people can have different explanations and even predictions, but you can't know for certain unless you manipulate.
Whatever shape Earth is, maybe we're only able to see the physical plane of existence, like we see the sand or water form patterns in cymatics experiments, but we don't see the entire pattern of the magnetic field unless we glimpse into that dimension with a ferrocell lens, and even then, maybe we're only looking at a 3D shadow of an actual 4D shape. I wish you could actually see this in person because you literally do have over three inches of depth on a fair fluidic solution that is less than one micron thin. These little black hole looking formations over here, that's either pole respectively. Just like we can only partially see a magnetic field, maybe we're only able to partially see the moon, sun, and stars. An electron does not exist in only one location around the atom, it actually exists as a wave. And what that means is that there are volumes around the nucleus of the atom that an electron will fill in. A single electron can actually be the entire sphere around the nucleus of the atom, or these orbitals as we call them, again, are caution, actually moving around the planet around the star. Some of these orbitals are shaped like dumbbells, and a single electron actually fills out a volume that looks like a dumbbell. Sometimes they look like discs. So despite our depictions of atoms with the nucleus in the middle and electron blowing around the outside, reality is nothing like that. Electrons form these volumes, some of those volumes even go through the nucleus. Some of these dumbbells actually have electrons exist inside the nucleus as well. When really is far more complicated than our participation of it, far more mysterious. So yeah, we could be looking at a reflection, or like they say, a shadow of a higher dimensional object projecting into our dimension. At different times of the year, we can all observe Venus either before the sunrise or just after the sunset, extremely bright in the blue sky, which suggests that it cannot be positioned in between us and where the sun is, as we're taught to believe, as that would mean that we're looking at the dark side, and it's clearly as bright as any star in the sky. Not only do we still see constellations like the Big Dipper still going around Polaris in exactly the same place, the stars haven't changed position in thousands of years, as seen in the constructions of the ancient civilizations. The sun and the moon make figure eights in the sky over the course of a year, known as an analemma. Why is it that we don't see this in any of the constellations, considering that we're supposedly on the other side of the sun? We're being encouraged to ignore reproducible evidence for theories, and if mainstream media promotes something with a cartoon, I'm supposed to believe in it? I'm supposed to take their word for it when it could have been manoeuvred by hand? I just keep seeing inconclusive evidence that's been up for debate to keep people divided. Politics as usual. And as always, mainstream media promotes the debate because it keeps us against each other. Maybe if people didn't subconsciously believe they were spiralling around the universe, they'd be a little bit more suspicious about the Antarctic Treaty. Maybe they are hiding other lands and resources, like Admiral Byrd said. Or maybe there is a firmament, as depicted in the Bible, Quran, and many of the ancient carvings. But I wouldn't recommend going there. Apart from the potential threat of military, you don't want to come over as a cult member. Trust me, I've been there. In general, be suspicious of anybody that you keep seeing on mainstream media, especially if they add to the satire. The thing is, if you don't get vaccinated, a germ can get in you and incubate and uh, mutate, and then you produce right, and you produce a new strain that everybody else, everybody else's immune system has to deal with. So you could make a very strong argument that you're required to get vaccinated. That's like a law, a rule, a regulation. Make that argument. Ooh, ooh. And it's good to stay suspicious of anybody else that keeps appearing in the spotlight, especially if they cause division or add to the satire that there's already too much of. Because of negative priming, sarcasm, the satire, it causes people to not be able to take many topics seriously and just go along with the narrative of those that are a potential threat, no matter how much they contradict themselves. We just seem to put a lot of faith in technologies of people when there's other technologies already out there that have been going for quite a while that nobody seems to be aware of and nobody seems to be worried about the other effects on us, on nature, and everybody's worried about carbon and everybody's worried about viruses, but nobody's worried about toxins. Nobody sees the damage of toxins and there could be other causes and other explanations and that maybe we're not always being told the truth. And sometimes there's a lot more financial gain behind a theory and why the majority of sequences have to be generated. And they even admit that they only put a small percentage could possibly mean we've got a misdiagnosis or maybe the original interpretations weren't hundred percent. But in case things are being blown out of proportion for other agendas, it might be wise to just remember that other things seem to come and go. We're putting a lot of faith statistics that could be skewered. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not a flu denier. I think it's insulting to say that every country has similar outcome by just going with the flow. So much so that people don't even see the harm that they're causing to themselves. And the same pattern of punishing the person that speaks out is echoed throughout celebrities and politicians. Even though as influencers, they should all know about the experiments that prove that people with authority have a very strong influence over the general public. Hence why many times predictive programming is used beforehand to obtain a desired result from the audience because it's well known that people do abide to authority. As true as the cliché practice makes perfect, with repetition things become normalised and we acquire new habits. And new, or otherwise previously undesired, customs become normalised. Could it be that we're allowing ideas and liberties to be hijacked by organisations with agendas? I'm not claiming to know the truth, I'm just trying to explain why I believe scepticism is healthy and necessary in society. It might be tough going out alone at first. I can speak from experience. But with time, people see that you're doing a good thing for a good cause. People come and contribute their skills and their ideas. And eventually you're not the odd ones out. Everyone wants to be part of it because everyone realises that they were mistaken and that they wish they'd jumped on sooner. But it's better late than never. So to everybody out there, I really, really ask you, please stop listening to what other people say and just make some primary observations for yourself. And really look with a critical eye at the official evidence. And I'm quite sure you'll come to the same conclusion. You've just got to connect the dots. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Howard, for your opening statement. Thank you. And Thank you. with that, we are going to hand it over to T Jump for his 10 to 20 opening minute statement. Okay, then. Um, so that was weird. Oh, I forget. You move over here. Still showing up on full screen. Minimize. There we go. Got it. Roll that down. All right. So, um, 
we know for a fact the world is in fact round because we've seen it. We've been to space. We can literally see it. Um, anybody can go there. You can just buy a ticket now. Uh, more importantly, we can demonstrate it here on Earth. Like one thing I said, I think the only thing I, in his video that I actually agreed with was that we should do pragmatic experiments that we can test for ourselves, and we can. There's this one really cool experiment we can do, which is we can build a ham radio. Ham radios are amateur radios that anybody can build in the backyard for a cheap amount, relatively cheap amount. And we can bounce radio signals off the moon, so we can know exactly how far away it is, and we can know it, the shape of the planet by bouncing it off at multiple locations. Like if we bounce it off in three different locations and it's all the same distance at every time of the day, everywhere we look at it, then there's only one possible physical shape of the planet. It's literally not possible for it to be any other shape if it's if the moon is always measured to be the same distance away from all points, from all any point in the day when you measure it. Because if you measure it from like two different points at the same distance away, maybe it's a triangle, it could be a single point away, but if you measure it from 10 points, all different spectrums, then it can't be flat. Because if it was, then one of the points would necessarily have to be closer than the other. So it has to be a circle. We know for a fact the moon is a circular way from a sphere that we are standing on. We can prove it for a fact. Anybody can do this at home. Just build a ham radio, measure it at different distances, or measure it at different places on the Earth, and you can know for a fact the world is actually round. It's pretty simple. Um, all the conspiracy theory stuff he said is just bogus. Like I don't know the value of it. It doesn't... There's no evidence of any of that. Um, obviously, we can't know anything with certainty other than we exist, but you have to provide evidence, and there's evidence for every of the alternative hypotheses that we are actually supported, and all of his have no evidence, and that's why they're not supported. Like, is it possible? Yes, all of those conspiracies are possible, but all of the things that we know to be true are actually better supported by all the evidence. Uh, I'll just conclude there, because that was that's enough. Woohoo! Thank you so very much, T Jump, for your opening statement. And we are now going to move into 40 minutes of open dialogue. The floor is all yours, guys. Cool. Was there anything in particular in the video you wanted me to respond to? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with. Um... If there's really thousands of satellites in outer space, can you provide me with a real photo of a whole country like Spain or Australia at day and at night and then backdate it annually for say 20 years so that we can see the difference of uh, growth in vegetation in a day and the difference of sh the streetlights with cities growing and stuff and new roads and that. So that yeah, would, I'm that would take a study that you'd have to ask NASA for. Like, I don't have access to the satellites. Like, why? Well, I don't need well, that. I'll, I'll just finish my question. Well, but I mean, I can, I can answer I'm it now. I don't you, have access to the satellites. I'm not asking for it now, Tom. I'm, I'm trying to say I challenge you and I challenge everyone out there that's watching to try and find a real photo of a whole country and be able to backdate it a few years so that you can see, you know, some comparison. It shouldn't be that difficult if there's thousands of satellites in space since the 60s, 70s, no? Try Google, Google Who image cares? search first. No, no, I'm asking, can you find a real photo of a whole country? Because- uh, Who cares? I can see couldn't. Well, like, that I doesn't can. matter. A lot of people that are interested in this investigation of is the globe um sorry is earth really a globe whether or not we can get a picture of a country does not have anything to do with whether or not the world is a globe like we knew the world was a globe before we had satellites or before we had photographs like well, that doesn't we'll matter get, we'll get there after but your one of your points was just that we've been to space we've seen earth yes we have a lot of people don't buy those images of earth because i don't of care the blue well if you don't care i don't understand what you're doing here tom Let's try and no, just. Uh, I, I, my, my goal isn't to convince you we've been to space. Like, if you don't believe that, that's your problem. I can prove the well, world the is round. Wait, 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 don't interrupt. So, I can prove the world is round by you buying a ham radio, going to your backyard, and measuring the distance to the moon with radio waves. I don't need to, you don't need to be convinced that the pictures are real. I don't care. You can prove it in your backyard. Right. So, you're jumping points. I wanted no, to that, that's my only point. My, my only point. point is you can go no, in your you backyard. Had, you, you had two. You said we've been to space and we've seen Earth. 
Well, a lot of people aren't buying the images of Earth because Robert Simmons. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not. My goal isn't to convince you of the images. My, my proof. Goal is wait, to wait, wait. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't, don't interrupt. don't interrupt. Stop interrupting. Stop. 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 Me. So wait, wait. I, I, there is one argument. Wait, stop. 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 No, no, I made one argument. Stop. Stop. And you're acting like I'm interrupting you. I haven't even finished my points. Stop talking. So wait, 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 wait. All right, guys. Now we're gonna. Uh, so, so I made I made one argument. There's one argument. Uh, the the fact that we've been to Earth isn't an argument. Stop talking. The fact that we've Tom's seen point. the fact that we've Manhattan. seen the Earth from space isn't an argument. The argument I presented is that you can go to your backyard, build a ham radio. I don't care if you believe we've been to space or not. It's just a fact. That's not an argument. It's a fact. The only argument I presented was you can go to your backyard, build a ham radio, and measure the distance to the moon and prove the world is flat, because if you measure at different points, it's always going to be the same distance. That's the only argument I presented. I presented no other arguments. Everything else I just printed was facts. And then back to you, Howard. Thank you. You claim it's a fact, yet you can't provide one photo of a whole country. I don't need to. Right now. You can't even take the challenge to find a real photo of a whole country and then try and backdate it, like I said. But don't let's to. go to your point. You want to talk about your radio experiment because that's all you've got, yeah? That's the only thing I presented, right? Yeah, it's all you ever present, Tom. And I've heard loads of people argue over it with you. I've heard people say that you don't know exactly how radio waves might react in different um, atmosphere conditions and we different do, actually. distances. We do. You, you've only checked radio waves down here uh, on, a, on a level where we can actually measure them and stuff. So when you're shooting up into the sky, you're supposing that what comes back to you is the same as what you shoot down here. Also, like I showed in my video that you sped up too fast no. and didn't even realize, in the video I showed that there are other models like the uh, cellular Earth, the what is it? The concave All right, wait, wait. You got about ten points there. One sec. One sec. You brought up. You, you brought up ten points. Let, let me address before you add any more. You can't. You get. You got to stop. I can't. I can't remember everything you said. You gotta stop. Slow down. So you've brought up two points. One, we do know exactly how radio waves work here and in the atmosphere and in everything because radio waves are light waves. We know how light waves work in space and on Earth. We can create vacuums. We can see how they work in vacuums. We know exactly how they work. They travel at the speed of light. Um, so that part's proven false. And so that was the only point. Remember, what, what, what next point? What's, what's your next point? You were saying that the speed of light's constant now, yeah? No, it changes based on whether or not it's in something. Like, slows right. down in water. Like, right. And what not water in the atmosphere? Air? Yeah, yes, water is in the atmosphere. Some air, right. water, vapor. So, like I said, when you're shooting it up into the sky where the atmosphere has got different conditions and we don't know what you're bouncing back off, um, because if there is a firmament or an electromagnetic field of some kind, like you call the Van Allen belt, maybe it's bouncing off that and maybe it's the same distance everywhere for people because they're bouncing off the, um, the electromagnetic field. Or that's maybe a good, that's a good question. Wait, Maybe hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, like I was saying before. Hold up, let me, let me respond to that. One room, point, one point at a time. Let, one point at a time. Let him finish and then one we'll go. One point at a time. I can't let him finish because he's got to make one point at a time. Like he goes on for like five minutes. So his point was, is that there could be like a firmament or an electromagnetic field that the light, the radio waves could be bouncing off of. If that was the case, we would detect it if we pointed it in every direction in the sky. We don't. We only get a signal back if we point it at the moon. That means the only place that this is happening is at the moon, which proves that it's false, that it's doing anything else with anything else in the atmosphere there because it only comes back when it's pointed directly at the moon and no other time go ahead next point yeah um same point no the people that talk about electrons and stuff like that michelle Fowler from nasa they explain that an electron can be in multiple places or in it can be in a whole field at the same time and that we're looking at a probability area so that we don't even understand the depictions of atoms aren't even right. So when we're talking about electrons uh, not necessarily having physical properties, you're assuming that the moon is physical or th third dimensional. Maybe it's a fourth dimensional um, thing that we're only seeing a slice of. Maybe Wait. it has different properties. Maybe it can be in many places at once. Maybe it can give different readings. Maybe the electromagnetic, uh, um, what, do you, what do we call it, field um, only gives that reading when the moon is in, in that 
area. There's lots of different explanations that lots Wait. of people could give, okay. Tom. You okay. aren't manipulating anything. You're just getting a reading back and you're assuming that light, you're, you're saying that light doesn't change speed yet. When we see it go through a glass prism, it changes speed. When we see it go through okay. water... Wait, wait, wait. Go, back, go, back, go, back, go back to your moon point. Go back to your moon point. So we can know the moon is a solid object or whatever is up there is a solid object because radio waves bounce off it. If radio waves didn't bounce off it, it wouldn't be a solid object or at least a semi-solid object. Radio waves can't bounce off things if they're not physical. Secondly, we can know the moon is at the right distance because it we always measure it. any point of the day. It's always visible, essentially, 24-7 from somewhere on Earth. And it can always be measured to always be the same distance and it's only when we point at the moon. If we point it at the same spot later in the day, we get nothing. If we point it at the same spot earlier in the day, we get nothing. It only works when we point it directly at the moon and only when we can see the moon. Uh, so that proves it's physical. That proves that what we're looking at, something is there where, where we're looking at it. And the electron thing, I don't know what your point was. Like, yes, there is a diffusion pattern in quantum mechanics that particles can be in multiple places that only affects like individual particles, not large bodies. So it doesn't affect large bodies at all. The probabilities for large bodies is uh, like 99.999 times 10 to the 120th probability, which is essentially 100%. It has 100% probability of being right there. Uh, the, the multiple wave thing only apply to like individual particles, not macro level. So I don't, I don't know what your point was there. It doesn't change anything. So, okay, next point. Yeah, let's move on because you're, you're sticking to your one experiment, which you have manipulated nothing. You're just getting a reading and you're making assumptions based on your preconceived ideas. And um, even if your experiment was, you know, somehow able to manipulate and, and you could prove your point, it still doesn't prove that we're on a globe because we could be in a concave earth or another shape, um, like a higher dimensional shape, which is why I'm not a flat earther. I keep an open mind. And my point being, you've got one experiment, mate. We've got loads. There's loads I mentioned in my video. And um, you're sticking to your one and you're ignoring all of the others. Now that doesn't seem very scientific to me that seems like selective wait, okay let's go let's address the apart from your one, wait, wait. Apart from your you're, one bringing up, you're bringing up multiple because points again hold experiment up. what else have you got hold, hold up well my experiment proves it so i'm going to stick with that experiment but you said that we could be on a concave earth well no we can't that's not actually possible because mm. if we were on a concave earth that means the moon would have to be directly above all of us at the exact same spot and we'd have to be like in a halo ring around around the moon or something, which doesn't make any sense. So then we have to appear to everyone at all times. So we can know we're not on a concave Earth. Um, we has to be on a globe because we measure the moon to be the same distance at all points while it's moving in the sky. And so the only possible way for that to happen is if the world is a globe. Like if we're on a concave Earth, you can't, it's not physically possible for the moon to move in the sky for one person to see it and measure it at a certain distance and for another person to not be able to measure it at the same distance. Like if someone else is on a different part of the world and it was equal distant from everyone, they, then everyone should be able to measure it at the same time, but they can't. You can only measure it from one direction, not another. So what, why is that a problem? It was in the video, in a concave earth, it would still give the same readings as being on a globe, just like walking around in a straight line. But yeah, let's uh, change. Could you, could you explain that to me? Wait, 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 ex explain, your... explain that a little bit more to me. So a concave earth, that means like uh, the, the world is bent the other direction, right? Like a, like a cup, like a bowl? I'm not like... trying to preach any models, Tom. I'm just trying to say no, 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 if you I'm look not, into not, the concave not earth you, theory. I'm not asking you to, so I'm, I'm asking you to explain this to me. So I say it is provably false. You will not get the same readings on a concave earth. It is not possible to get the same readings on a concave earth. And I'm asking, and you said it is. You said you would get the same readings on a concave earth. So I'm trying to ask for you to explain to me how. So if one person is on one side of the planet and they can see the moon and they can measure the moon and another person is on another side of the planet and they can't see the moon anywhere in the sky and it comes up like on the edge how is that possible on a concave earth is it because if, if, if it was concave everyone should be able to like measure it right no because this the theory goes that the sky is in the middle yeah. So you you would only you would either be looking at the daytime or the nighttime. Yeah. Okay. So if the moon is going to come over the horizon. Point being, look into the concave earth if you're interested. I'm not a concave earther. I'm just telling you that the concave earthers have got explanations, and I put the in the video 
a, a, a visualization of how they can depict things and how the moon and everything would move in their model. But well, I'm not asking how it would move. So short sighted as well. So I prefer to keep an open mind and look at things that we can verify for ourselves. Like you should be able okay, to. Okay, okay, go back, go back, go back. You're bringing up your moving points. You're moving points again. Wait, 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 wait. So you're moving points again. So I didn't ask about the way it would move. I understand how a moon could move on a concave earth. The problem is, is you can't get the measurements on the concave earth. You can't build a ham radio in your backyard and measure it to be 250,000 miles away from any location on a concave earth. That isn't possible. That that you can't do on a concave earth. So if unless you can explain to me how that's possible, then you can't use that as an argument that, oh, well, they could do it by some mysterious means because I've kind of disproven that no, whole worldview. It's, it's not mysterious. It was clearly shown in the video, in the graphic. How It's a lot easier if you go back to the video or look into it in your own time. There's I, loads of Your video didn't show this. Your video Sorry? didn't show this. So, so what it I'm did, asking yeah, is, is how can... Up. Wait, 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 wait. My question is, how can the moon be measured to be the exact same distance from every point on Earth within plus or minus 10%. Because on your model, that would not be the case. On the pictures you showed, they would be measured to be different distances by a lot. They'd be like three times as far away from one way, from one point, and one time as far away from another point. You wouldn't be able to measure the same distance on your model, the one that you presented in your video, uh, the, the not your model, the concave Earth model. Therefore, that model can't work. It can't explain the data. I disagree. You've got a globe, invert it. It's the exact same difference. The moon's in the middle. It, it, look, Tom, I really don't want to argue about concave Earth because it's not my model. But if you look into it, you'll see that you what you're saying argument. is wrong. So, so again, so here, here is a flat disk. Here is the moon. If the moon is here, it's one time away this way, four times away this way, much farther away. Now, if the moon is measured to be the exact same distance from every single point, the only way that's possible on a concave earth is if it's stuck right in the center. If it moves anywhere, it'll be closer to this side than this side. So it has to be the exact same distance from every single point on earth. The only way that's possible is it has to be stuck right in the center. Now on a globe earth, it's really easy because you have it bent the other way. Now you can say, oh, it's this far away from here and then it just keeps going around in a big circle. That's the explanation. Concave earth doesn't work that way. It has to be stuck. So how can you get the exact same measurement of the exact same distance on a concave Earth without with it moving? How is that possible? I could say the same for the globe model. It's it's just the point that you've not looked into it and you're sim oversimplifying it. And I'm not really bothered. Like you say, I don't care. I'm just trying to explain it, that it's your argument. No, that my argument is Tom that you can you can interpret how radio waves work down here and you can verify it with manipulating it and measuring it with physical ruler you can't manipulate uh, well, I, I can I can debunk that claim too but but right now I'm I'm responding to your claim that the same measurements can be made on a concave earth that is provably false I can prove that false there's no possible way for that to occur so unless you want to retract that and say you were wrong or you, you can't explain it. If you can't explain it, that's no, fine. No. You don't understand it, it well enough. I don't want to spend an hour trying to explain something that a visual graphic just showed you in the video in a few seconds. Which well, if you didn't. don't want to go back to the video, then don't bother. But I'm, I'm trying to the say... The video fails. I looked at the video. The video fails. So again, you, how how in the video does, the, does it get the same measurement of the distance of the moon every single time? How? Because the video doesn't do that. The video, it's in different places. And the video is different distances. So the video fails. The moon was in the middle. Yeah, moon in the middle. Like you said it would have to be. Yep. Yeah. And not moving. So, so it can't move. Moving. But like we said about electrons, maybe it's in multiple places at the same time, or maybe it's, who knows? You're trying electrons? to talk about quantum mechanics and stuff, as if quantum you know mechanics? about it, when it's called quantum theory. Because it's a theory, isn't it? It's because it hasn't been manipulated, and it's also mm, up for no. interpretation. So, so yeah. I'm very, I'm very, very familiar with quantum theory and quantum mechanics. Theory is what everything in science is called. So germ theory of disease, the theory of gravity, the theory of electromagnetism, like yeah, all of those are theories because they're true. Theories are things that are built on facts. It's the highest thing in science. So um, like nuclear weapons, those are the, the chemical decay theory. The, everything in science is a theory. So theory is essentially proven. Theory means proven. Um, mm. But again so so i mean i guess we can just move on because you can't you can't seem to explain to me how this is possible 
Well, what was I, the, the I, other I, point? I, I could try, but I don't want to. Go for my, my, it. But just like you said about the germ theory being proven, well, why don't mosquitoes transmit the HIV virus, Tom? AIDS, they do. Um, no, HIV is not passed by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes do like transmit AIDS, or or if they get if they no. can get it from the genitals, essentially, no, they get enough of it. Never proven any transmission contagion of disease, Tom. It's called germ theory because it's a theory. Well, they, they, that's a look virus. Into Boston, look into the Boston next. That, that's a virus. That's not a. That's it's a virus. So different. The HIV virus. They call it a HIV virus. Yeah. How come mosquitoes don't transmit that, mate? Because it's a virus, the, not a bacteria. But, and I'm just going to bring you guys back. It's very interesting, but we're coming back round versus flat, baby. Okay. Well, Tom said in one of his other debates that there is no Well, don't no bring up what I brought up in other debates. Gravity. There's no device to measure gravity, you said, to manipulate gravity. I never said, said that, but I... But... That does yeah, nothing did. to do with my. I never brought that up in this debate, so don't try to bring up what I brought in other you debates. You just said that theories are scientifically proven. Yes. Yet the yes. theory of gravity hasn't been proven because yes, there's has. no people to manipulate it, like you said yourself, Tom. Yeah, I never said that, but yes, it has been proven. Yeah, so the theory of gravity has been proven the same way every scientific theory is proven by making novel testable predictions. You say, if my hypothesis is true, here's an experiment we will do and see this result. We do the experiment, we see the result, then the theory is proven. We do that enough times, it gets proven. So the LIGO experiment proved gravity. The bending of gravitational waves proves gravity. The CMB proved gravity. Dark matter proved gravity. The curvature of light around the sun measured by Einstein in, what, 1960 or something, that proved gravity. Um, all the different things. We've measured dozens and dozens of experiments have proven gravity. The Experiment Mickelson Morley proved gravity. The experiment where we measured the speed of clocks, atomic clocks, one on the Earth and one in a plane, proved gravity. Um, the retrograde orbit of Mercury proved gravity. Those are just the ones I can list off the top of my head. Those all prove gravity. No, they don't. Like you've had this debate a million times. Look, this is a boring because you're saying that the first to predict gets the credit, and I'm saying the person who can manipulate to verify the independent variable, to identify the definite cause and effect. So this is an argument that you can have with- Wait, what, was, what was that? What was- Right, you, you're, Manipulate your the independent variable? The first person, your, your claim is that the first person to predict gets the credit, that's science. If yeah. somebody can make a prediction, the first person to make a prediction takes the credit. That's what yep. you've said, yeah? Yep. Well, that's what was ridiculous. the ridiculous? What was That's the thing ridiculous. you said about the manipulate variable? You've claims? also said, Tom, that all data can be explained with infinite amounts of hypothesis, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, it's called the problem right, of underdetermination. So, so aren't you contradicting yourself a little bit? No. There, mate? How would that yeah. be a contradiction? Because just because somebody made a prediction and got it right doesn't mean that they're a hundred percent correct. Because someone else could make a prediction and get it correct. And someone else can make a prediction and get it correct. And the third person to make a prediction could actually be correct. But you're just going to stick with the first person, yeah, Tom? Right, right. So, so the first one has the most evidence, and then another one can get more evidence by making a new prediction, and another one can get more evidence by making a new prediction. But the first one to be able to make successful predictions has the most evidence, so it's the most supported. And then others can come along and become more supported, but that's not a contradiction, no. Well, yeah, it is, because what you're saying is you're going to stick with your radio little experiments, which you're not manipulating anything. You're just making an observation and coming to the conclusion Me based, on what you've, based on what you've manipulated down here. Or measurements. And you're going, to throw out, you're going to throw out all of the other experiments that we've done um, and that we're asking you to do. Um, you're, you're just going to ignore all of the other experiments and stick with your one because that's how you think science works. Uh, no, I just I just know this one does work. What what was there a point somewhere in there? Like, so mine proves the world is round. No, you don't prove anything. You you, you prove that you have beliefs and you, you can support your beliefs with a radio um, experiment. But no, that's like a, that's a novel stick, testable like prediction. In the sand, showing the shadows, um, you, you can predict that the shadows are tilting because the sun's ninety three million miles away. And we're on a globe, and then flat earthers can say, "Well, no, it's because the sun's closer." 
and it's smaller. So, so you know, you can argue about who can make the right prediction, but at the end of the day, unless you're manipulating Wait, it, you have you ever made a prediction? Have flat earthers have flat earthers ever made a successful prediction? Like global earthers have made tons of successful predictions. What okay, what predictions? That's, that's a great point. The burden of proof is on you because people assumed that the Earth was either flat or multi-dimensional before the globe came along. So you know all the astrologers um, that the royalty used um, way before Copernicus came out. So yeah, people were predicting solar eclipses. People were eclipse, uh, predicting all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. So back before we knew the world was round, people believed the world was flat and were able to make predictions. Have any recent predictions, any recent progress in the past thousand years or so been made from a flat earther or is it all globe earthers? The only progress you're talking about is Hollywood imagery. That I'm asking for a real photo of a country and you just want to keep diverting I, out I don't, of that because you can't find a photo of a real country, a whole country. I don't need one. Like, a real like, photo like, of a whole like, country, can you, Tom? Well, it doesn't yeah, matter. Believe, like the world, the world, How the does world. It not matter? We've been to space since well, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to explain that. So it literally doesn't matter if there's a photo of a country. Like that doesn't change the shape of the Earth. Whether or not there's a photo of a country is irrelevant to whether or not the world is round. Um, I don't have access to the satellites. If I did, I could get you one in ten minutes. I don't have access to them, but it's again not relevant. I don't need to. Like that's not. Whether or You've not got I can to Google it, Google search, Google you, image. You search. want you want me to Google an image for you? Like I can Google I want you stuff to try, for you. Please try and find a real photo of a whole country like the UK. I don't France, need to. Spain, Why you would I waste my time on it? You that? can't. You can't. No, if I if I had the the access to the satellites, I could take one for you. So I don't know which ones are real ones and which ones aren't. Some are manipulated, some aren't. But that's not my area. You would ask someone who actually can do that. I can prove it's round without that. I don't need to give you an image of a country. Why 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 can't you find a photo of a whole country when there's supposedly been thousands of satellites? Because I can't tell the difference between a photorealistic picture from a satellite and an edited one. Like, that's not my expertise. I could ask an NASA person to do it. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. So, you, so you're being honest now and saying that you wouldn't know the difference or that yeah. you, you might be biased because of your beliefs. Well, I, I know I wouldn't know the difference. I wouldn't even look because it's not my area. I don't care. Like it doesn't yeah, make a difference. Here, yeah, you're here defending the globe because of one radio experiment and you're going to ignore that you can't find a photo of a whole country. Yes, because the radio experiment proves the world is round. Like why, why would I care if no, I can find a it, picture of a country? It just proves that you can shoot radio waves at the moon and that they bounce back at a certain time. Yes. It doesn't pr prove much else. It doesn't say as much about the surface of the floor. What you're saying about the distances, I could say that it's the same distance on the firmament all the time if that's the firmament's an electromagnetic field or the path what? that it runs i don't i don't really need to stay on that argument all night tom because you're just making interpretations based on what you believe from having a radio wave come back at you at a certain time all right, all right so let's let's address time. let's address that point so if it was the firmament being the same distance at all times why don't we get a measurement back when we point it in any other direction ever at any time of day where the moon is not there. Because maybe you need the moon to be there to get that reading. Why because do you is, think that might be? Because it is there. Yes. But it but might have more moon. properties than just a three-dimensional being. You're only seeing one face of it, yet you're assuming it's a sphere that's three-dimensional. What if it's four-dimensional? That's fine. you're only seeing a, a, a slice of a 3D uh, shadow of it. That's fine. The moon could be a square. It would still prove the world is round. Like, it doesn't no, matter what shape it is. If it's, if it's a higher dimensional uh, object, then maybe you're saying that it's always giving us the same reading no matter where you are in the Earth because that's all we can access and that's all we can see of it. But maybe it can be in many places because it's multidimensional. Maybe it can be... Uh, this is like the quantum stuff. It, it's like all up for interpretation and someone that's really good uh, some, with semantics could maybe explain it really beautifully and make you believe them. But I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm just trying to say, keep an open mind. You've got one experiment, mate. People uh -huh. have been uh, showing you different so, experiments and different results for years now and you just keep brushing them off. 
this is your one experiment. So, so it doesn't matter what the shape of the moon is. It doesn't matter how many dimensions it has. We know that something there, some, one part of the moon, one dimension of the moon causes the radio waves to bounce back. And it causes the radio waves to bounce back from the same distance, no matter when and where you're measuring it. And you can like have one person all the way or like many people all the way around the world continuously measure the exact same spot. And it always bounces back at the exact same distance. So no matter what that is, no matter, no matter whatever the thing that is, it proves the world is round because no matter what that is, no matter how many dimensions, well, one second, let me finish. So no matter what it is, no matter what dimensions it is, no matter what shape it is, because that object, even if it's like a camera lens, if it's a, if it's a magical camera lens in space and it's measured to be uh, 255,000 miles away, no matter which time of day or which point you're measuring from, the only way that's possible is if the world is round. So, I mean, talking yeah, about what kind, go, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, because we've all heard this so many times, Tom, it's boring, mate. Um, you said that radio waves are like light, yeah? That yeah, they're, yeah. Okay, great, great. So, you don't believe that moonlight chills water? Uh, because, well, you've never done the, because you've never done the experiment yourself. You well, believe in... Well, the, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't, cooling, I don't believe that. Cooling. So, so I believe that, yes, moonlight does have a cooling effect, not because of the moonlight, but because it's blocking radio, different kinds of radio waves. I actually looked this up at one time. There is an explanation for this. So cold uh, moonlight can does I, can cause finish cooling. Mine? Can I finish my point now? So sure, sure, this, I just is, wanna, beautiful. Sorry, this you, is beautiful. You, we you, actually you, agree. We agree that the moon does have a chilling effect, but you believe in an ex explanation that you've read in a book that yes. keeps your that keeps your confirmation bias. So it's like, yeah, I can still believe in my globe and I can understand that the radio waves have bounced off a no. solid object that has no property, light properties of its own. But no, that, that's, that's not my position, no. If I may just make my point so that you understand what position I'm saying. Well, I mean, um, I apologize for interrupting, but you keep saying that you believe this and then I have to be like, no, that's not what I believe. So so if you keep telling me what I believe, I kind of have to interrupt you like, nope. So the reason the reason I believe this is because it can be demonstrated in a lab. We can actually show what causes this cooling effect. And it's not just the moon. You can replicate it with lamps. Um, so it, we can we can demonstrate. We know for a fact what's causing the cooling because we can do I it in a lab. I understand what radiative cooling is. I'm saying that you're assuming that that's the same cause as why we're testing that moonlight uh, cools water compared to water that's left in unsheltered shade of moonlight so you can have on the same surface where moonlight is hitting a glass of water and where moonlight is not hitting a glass of water yet they're both on the same surface they're not covered by anything else except for a wall in the garden that's casting shade so like I say, try and do the experiment yourself and you'll see that moonlight does chill and you can manipulate it with a magnifying glass. So, you know, that's not just a prediction and we don't need to keep going back to your explanations to try and figure it out and try and make an excuse for it. If the moon, if you just stand with me for one second, if the moon is generating its own light, and it has negative properties. I'm not trying to say that it gives a cold light. Maybe it retracts energy, a negative polarity. I don't know. I'm saying there's two options I can think of. It could give cold, but that would break the thermo, law of thermodynamics. Or it could be retracting energy, like retracting heat, a negative polarity, um, a negative energy source, like retracting on the ether kind of Ken Wheeler idea. So just stand with me on this idea. If the moon is generating a cooling light or um, a light that retracts heat, wouldn't that affect your radio waves? No. Because you said that they're technically like light and that light gets affected in water and mediums like glass yep. prisms. So yep. maybe if light was bouncing off light or hitting something that generates a light that retracts energy or gives out a, its own light that's it's not a, not a reflection of sunlight but it's light source how can you just say no because we're because talking light, about a light, a light that we don't really know of because we've always assumed that light because of, gives energy because the speed of light isn't affected by temperature it still goes at the same speed regardless of the temperature the only thing that changes the speed of it is if a physical thing is in between it stopping it 
I'm not saying the speed of light, I'm saying it's a different type of light. It gives, or it takes heat or gives cold. It doesn't give heat. So it would be a different vibration. And this is not me saying that there's definitely ether, but if you look into Ken Al Wheeler's explanations of the uh, rate of uh, propagation of ether or the rate of induction, he can explain why um, light will hit a glass prism, slow down, and then speed up again. He'll say if it was a photon, you'd need something to give it the acceleration when it comes out of the glass prism or the water medium, Wait. where if we are in um, a medium of ether, Wait, you, sl slow, being a sl vibration, you said slow down. It would naturally vibrate at a faster pace when it leaves the thicker uh, medium when it, it goes from a thicker density to a lighter density. Wait, wait so, you said you said slow down. So like it doesn't slow down. The, the vibration frequency doesn't change the speed. The temperature doesn't change the speed. Like the shape doesn't change the speed. I don't know what you're saying here because even if I granted that the moon was emitting cold light, um, which it doesn't, but that'd be cool, uh, it wouldn't slow down the radio waves. The radio waves would still get the same measurement speed regardless, even if it, the moon did emit cold light. What if it sp sped them up? What if it's sp so? What if it sped them up? Look, you're you're just saying that it wouldn't speed them up. It wouldn't slow them down. But you're also saying that water does. So right. I, I don't understand how you can be so certain of everything when we know that moonlight has an effect on water. We know that moonlight has an effect on the agriculture. Ask any farmer. But and, because um, because light. You're, you're trying to say that these are totally unrelated things when we know scientifically you've just said yourself water affects the speed um that light travels or the rate of induction of the ether and uh, whichever it is so so make your mind up tom it, right so, so water so it does. water slows down light because there's a whole bunch of molecules in the way uh the temperature doesn't s slow down light so if there's like more light that's not going to slow down the light i, I don't, didn't I, say temperature i didn't say temperature i'm saying that we don't know what happens in the atmosphere as we get so high up and far away we don't know yes we do what property you don't know tom you're only going yes, off I do. what you've read in books and been told by nasa and stuff and no. there are different ways that you can um measure wait wait, wait things you, with the you, you, you told me what i know again you told me what I know again. Like I, I go to the University of Minnesota regularly and participate in different kinds of things there, like vacuum chambers. Like we can decrease the amount of atmosphere in the air and change it to meet what's in the atmosphere that we've measured with the balloons and everything. We know exactly how radio waves work at those temperatures or at those heights because we literally bounce the radio waves off of them and have been since the 1960s where they were bouncing radio waves off of the atmosphere to see planes over the horizon. We know exactly how it operates up there. We bounce radio waves outside of space all the time. Uh, people have bounced them off the moon. People have bounced them off of the sun. We know exactly how they operate. Um, I don't know what, what your, what your argument here is, is like, yeah, yeah, we do know what, what happens with radio waves when they leave the atmosphere, they go faster, not slower. But the moon is in our atmosphere, supposedly. Uh, yeah, it's in the out, most outermost layer, which is like several particles per like, what, 15 feet something like is z equivalent to zero atmosphere. So it has no effect on the speed of light. I mean, it, you sound very confident, but I'm, I'm not convinced. So I'll, I'll tell you what, mate, you, you have your confidence in your radio waves and we'll agree to disagree. Let's try and talk about some other angles. Yeah. When you don't want to talk about the fact that you find it impossible to find a photo of a whole country. No, so I never said it's impossible. Let's talk, so let's talk about the the footage that I showed in my, my actual video of the Go West and GOES East satellite footage that show clouds doing a little wiggle, but not really changing over 39 hours and compare them to the Himawari 8 and the Discover Epic satellite footage where they have complete fixed clouds. Uh, the position of the clouds is fixed throughout the whole rotation, the whole show. So what? they're all official uh, footage. That's all official footage, yet we've got completely different uh, effects. One, one is showing wiggling clouds and the other is showing fixed clouds. Why so do I do care about, about the How does this prove the world is flat? I'm, I, I didn't say it was flat. I'm saying that we're being lied to and that we don't know what shape the earth is. 
and that you're making assumptions with your radio waves based on the imagery that you believe in. Yet no. I'm asking you to look at the imagery that you believe in and actually. I don't believe in that imagery. Movie. I never, I never ever look at that imagery because I don't care. Like none of it matters. I've never looked at the photo imagery of this, the satellites because I don't care. Um, none of my radio me measurements have anything to do with those pictures. So I don't care if those pictures are. So we agree. Not. So, so we do agree then that it's strange, even though you're not interested, it's strange that nobody can find a photo, a real photo of a whole country. No, and that's that not strange. And that the satellite footage is inconsistent. The clouds no, are it's not clearly strange. different from satellite About... footage. You agree on that? It's weird, no? no? About five more strange. minutes, guys, and then we're going to slide into Q&A. So yes, we can actually find photos of entire countries. That's not even a difficult thing to do. If I had access to a satellite, I'd just give you one right now. Um, but yeah, again, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter. The, like it's completely irrelevant whether or not we can find photos. And the fact that satellite footage might disagree is probably to do electrical signals or something. I don't know. There's lots of ways to explain that, but it's irrelevant. Like who cares? Like, no, no. I, I appreciate that you said you don't know. I appreciate that. Uh, what about the railgun hitting a target over a hundred miles away using an RF pencil beam laser uh, without having to account for curvature or the supposed Coriolis effect? How do you explain that, Tom? You must care about that. A hundred mile, boom, railgun. Uh, because it did account for the Coriolis effect? Please, come on. You'd have to know the different speeds of uh, Earth's rotation, depending where you're pointing, depending on your elevation. Yep. Uh, yep. No, you're just you're just saying that, Tom. You're just saying that. There's no evidence of them ever accounting for Coriolis effect. And if that was true, why did the Red Bull uh, skydive stay up there for three hours and land back in New Mexico where he took off from? Why do helicopters hover for hours above towers and never have to follow any curvature? Uh, follow because any the rotation? atmosphere goes with the world. It's spinning yeah. with the world. Like what? <laughs> I've heard that argument loads of times, but it just doesn't really, uh, it sounds great, but show me some evidence of them uh, accounting for the Coriolis effect. Show me some evidence. I just don't uh, want an explanation. Snipers do it all the time. You can find it in YouTube videos. Like No, I've heard different snipers say different things. If a rail gun can shoot a hundred miles away with a laser, what is the laser following the curvature? Yeah, because of laser refraction. So, so the refraction works when we shoot a laser out, and refraction works perfectly when we see a hundred miles away coming at us. So, you know, we yeah. can see a hundred miles. The light comes at us. We can shoot a laser at it. It just bends the perfect amount that it needs to bend without any distortion, and we can hit a target a hundred miles away. You believe because you aren't showing any proof that they account for curvature or the Coriolis effect. Well, we know light bends because we can bend it. We can see it bending. Like, I don't see what your issue is here. Yes, light can bend. Yeah, but when light bends, it normally distorts. And we're talking about seeing 100 miles. What do you mean by clearly. distort? We're talking about shooting a laser. What, what, what do you mean by distort? Target. Well, when we see atmospheric refraction and optical effects due to the conditions in the atmosphere, causing mirage and causing light refraction. We tend to see things get squashed, compressed, stretched, skewered. So I'm asking, why is it that when we show perfectly clear days and we see way past the supposed geometrical horizon that you believe in, but it's an apparent location, but you can't pr prove it, well, I'm sorry, mate. We're not buying it, and I'm not the only person here, and I might not be as okay. Um, um, let me let me comment on literate as you, but there's loads of people that are that are saying the same as me. Okay, so the light diffusion thingy, like when we look at the curvature of light around the sun, it doesn't diffuse like at all. So light doesn't always diffuse, especially on a laser. It's a very concentrated beam. It doesn't diffuse very much at all. Um, your vision does. Your vision just distorts quite a bit, but concentrated beams of light don't really distort all that much. That would be why. I'm not convinced. But one more question before we go into questions and answers. Uh, why don't any of the stars make a figure eight pattern in the sky over a year, the analemma, like the sun and the moon do when photographed throughout a year? Uh, because we rotate faster than we go around the earth. 
Okay. Going around the sun. So so we rotate around the, the earth rotates like once every 24 hours. It goes around the sun once every 365 days. So it would make a figure eight if we went faster around the sun. We, it, would, it could do a figure eight. And yeah, with that. I think he misunderstood my question. If I can greatly get that back in. Well, let me let me try to clarify. So, so and the then sun, his answer will be the last one. Well, yeah. Let me, the sun make figure eights. Right, why right. don't the stars, any of the stars, show any parallax when we're on a completely different side of the sun, tilted, looking upwards at one point of the year, tilted, uh, looking downwards on the six months later? Why don't we see stars in a different position in the sky? Why don't we see any parallax like we do with the sun and the moon and a lemma? Please. Well, to, to see them go in a figure eight, what you would have to do is that the world would have to go around the sun at essentially about the same rate that the world rotates around itself. So if the world rotated once every 365 days around the sun and did a, a single day every 365 days, then you would get a figure eight. Like it, the stars would all be doing figure eights in the sky if that Parallax. happened. Forget the eight, parallax. Any, okay. any and form. And guys, we're going to end the open discussion on that. I want to thank both T-Jump and Howard for that back and forth. There are links of which are in the description below, but we are now going to switch into the Q&A section. So feel free to tag Modern Day Debate or myself at Amy Newman. So Sideshow Nav, send in love, uh, can pick it up and we can get your question with that. $2 super chat coming from Oflamo. Howard, why does Yahweh support liars? Could, could you cite? Um, um, <laughs> could All you give right. an example? Could you give an example? I'm not sure. Might need a follow up. Send in love of $2 from Bubblegum Gun. Flat Earth is a CIA plot to discredit actual conspiracy. <laughs> is that for me or Tom? Uh, I think that was for you. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. I think that if you looked at the numerology, the, um, the actual word Flat Earth has probably been designed. It's a trigger word. That's if I'm wrong about the numerology and the geometria, then for sure it's been a neg we've been negative primed with the word flat earth, with the imagery of the water falling off. It's definitely a psyop. I'm 100% behind that. It's uh, more likely to be a higher dimensional shape that only the creator knows. And we're just all little ants with big egos uh, that like to pretend we know everything when really, like Tom says, we just have supported beliefs. $5 super chat from Jim Bob. Tom, have you done the radio measurement demonstration yourself? Yes. There you go. $5 super chat coming from Caucasian Sensation. Howard, you deflect, deny, and dodge questions better than any politician in history. I, I think that's Thank unfair. You. Like he he did he did a pretty good job of trying to answer them for the most part. I don't think he was deflecting or dodging as much as some of the others. So I think that's unfair. Thank you. And all right. Looks like got a $5 super chat from Cannabis Wannabis. I saw you sent another super chat in later, but if you want an even extra super chat, feel free to send that in. Thank you so much for your support, Cannabis. Made by Jim Bob for $5. Tom, can you do science without manipulating an independent variable? Yep. It's called a measurement. You can, you can measure stuff. Five dollar super chat from Cannabis Wannabis. Tom, in your radio experiment, did you aim at the sun or empty space or a distant building for distance verification? Yes, we've tested radio waves on all of those things. On the sun, it's it's harder because there's a whole bunch of electromagnetic radi radiation that makes it interfere with the signal so it's harder to measure from the sun but yeah buildings are easy we, we do measure buildings with radar all the time um 
other planets we can't get other planet or i guess we could if we had a powerful enough one not with like a ham radio we couldn't but yeah we've done that with all kinds of things so electromagnetic waves would affect it you agree thank you from the sun because it's oh, the, but the sun moon. but the moon isn't the sun exactly but it has its own electromagnetic uh output <gasps> which would yep. affect uh, the radio waves thank you thank you so much for conceding on that no no because you don't that. get you don't get cancer way. from being in the moonlight you get cancer from being in the sunlight because one is significantly more powerful than the other you get cancer from being malnutritioned and not being able to process the photosynthesis like uh the, yeah what and it was tom's question yeah. so that no or <laughs> gotta let him have the final answer i'm gonna go with no um, i like i like no there we go I'll send you uh, a five dollar super chat from sunflower howard mosquitoes act as vectors for sp and spread diseases like west nile zika etc why is the fact that they can't act as vectors for hiv relevant i disagree we seem to believe that malaria is uh, spread by mosquitoes, but maybe we catch malaria, maybe malaria is from mosquitoes, maybe malaria is an infection from what mosquitoes bites do to us. But apart from malaria, there is no scientific experiment that proves the contagion of disease. So please look into it, everybody. It's a profitable theory that sells lots of pharmaceuticals, but there is no evidence since 1918, the Boston experiments where a hundred soldiers lined up and had snot from sick people injected into them, coughed and sneezed. Hey, pussycat. Yeah, that's conspiracy cats. Um, so yeah, they've never proven in a hundred years the contagion of disease. I really recommend everyone look into the terrain theory. If you look after your body and know how to detox and get away from stress, radiation and toxins in the first place, then you probably won't get these viruses, which could be exosomes, your body's trying to deal with the problems just like tumors might not be the problem they might be a white flag your body trying to capture a problem <laughs> before it spreads <sighs> yeah tom i'll send you loads of info if you're interested in uh, stuff that's not pharmaceutical backed yeah the thing stopping your heart physically isn't the problem that that's the, that's it it's trying try to prevent some other problem five dollars yeah. super chat and actually, it was Howard's last word. Did you have any? The okay. moon would definitely have an electromagnetic effect on Tom's radio waves. If we're right, when I say we, I mean all the people that have done the experiments to verify the radiative cooling little explanation excuse. So, yeah, Tom, please do the experiments and then let's talk more about the electromagnetic effect of the moon because you say it has an effect on water. Well, maybe that's the electromagnetic uh, output that it has, not gravity, that hasn't been manipulated yet, as you've said, no devices exist. Thank you. Yeah. You name checked them, so I got to give Tom a response. Uh, yeah, the electromagnetic field from the moon that we can't measure for some reason is there. Can't measure it with anything, but it's there. <laughs> thermometer, thermometer. And there we have it, folks. Five dollars from Sean Hawkins. Flat earthers have had 2,500 years to debunk the globe, TikTok guys. <laughs> Where does he get his timeline from, though? Didn't you see those titans in my video, mate? There's mountains of evidence everywhere that we will, we 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 don't know what the timeline is. We're being lied to about the the artifacts, the constructions. We're being lied to about evolution because if evolution was true, things would be getting bigger. Yet we can see titans and giants <laughs> and mountains. So, yeah, really look into biogeology and uh, then maybe you won't be so confident about your timeline. Thank you so very much. And we will be going into regular questions. But if you want your burning desire questions read live, make sure you send in those super chats because it gets moved right to the front. Mark Reed asks, HGS... There's satellite photos of the entire continent of Australia when bushfires were occurring last year. 
why do you think these photos don't exist? Is he sure that it's a photo of the whole country and not a composite image of multiple photos from high altitude, like the HAPS satellites that are just floating above us and not in outer space? Because if they were, we'd get a whole photo of a country. Sorry, a real photo of a whole country. I'm a bit dyslexic. Simon Dan likes to pick on things like that. But I'm glad that Tom doesn't. I really appreciate that he uh, he's not had any low blows. $5 super chat from Oflamo. Wolfram Math World says dimension is the number of coordinates needed to specify a point on an object. How many dimensions does the moon have? So I'll read that one more time. Wolfram yeah, Math please. World says dimensions is the number of coordinates needed to specify a point on an object. How many dimensions does the moon have? I would be lying if I claim to, to know but I'm quite sure that it's a higher dimension than 3D for the fact that nobody has ever seen the back, the side, the top, the bottom. So just like um, lots of people explain, if a higher dimensional object visited our dimension, we would only see a slice, a shadow, a projection of it. Like when we draw a cube on a piece of paper, we know it's a cube, but it's actually a 2D shadow of a cube. So that seems to make a lot more sense to me than, um, than it's a ball and that we've never seen the other side of it because, and I'll finish on this one, because even though they've got their explanation that it rotates magically at the same speed as our rotation, but in the opposite direction or whatever, how can we see the moon? And I want everyone to think about this. How can we see the moon if you see the little rabbit? Yeah. How come the moon rotates? I would like Tom or any of these uh, globe fanatics out there that like to defend their beliefs we're calling people flurfs and all that. I'd love you to show me a model of a moon that can rotate at the same speed as Earth and also rotate the other way and still show the same face throughout history. I'd love that. I'd love that because I just can't picture it in my mind. Maybe Tom or someone could help me. I have no idea what you even said there. Like rotate both directions? What? Right. So here's my face, yeah? I'm the moon. How can we see the face of the moon rotating left and right? You can call it the wobble or whatever. Yeah, we see the rabbit sometimes is sideways, sometimes is upright. Yeah. So how can the moon change if it's also rotating to maintain exactly the same face as us? Because How can it rotate two because directions? the Earth is tilted by fifteen degrees, like so, there's different so the gravitation. Moon would have to be tilted and always rotate in the same way. But if we see the Moon changing its tilt as well as supposedly orbiting us, then why don't we see another face of the Moon, Tom? Ever? Because it changes one way and then changes the other way, yeah, like it I'll goes one you, way. If we see the rabbit. Sometimes the rabbit's a little bit leaning over. Sometimes the rabbit's standing tall. Sometimes the rabbit's looking a bit up. So how does that work? Because the world is at a degree. It's not perfectly straight. Um, no. Yeah. Spinning on an axis, it would have to be on the same axis as us so that we always see the same face. But your explanation doesn't work when we see that the rabbit, the face of the moon, changes its axis. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is straight to the camera, but it looks to the parallel to the right, to the axis. Now it's parallel left. It's like it's flipped. It's now to the right, to the left. Now if you do it this way. 
Yeah. Oh God. Did you see how you, do you see how you saw a different side of the Coca Cola can? Like I, I could do it this way, and then shh, still yeah, going to have the same effect. So because it's at an angle, this is how it works. Like, no, no, we're talking about different rotations. I see two. I see one rotation of the rabbit. You're telling me to believe in another rotation that we don't see because we always see the same face. Yet we do see the face rotating another way, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Yet you're telling us that it's also rotating uh, on its axis as well. Because the Earth is tilted. The moon isn't rotating. The Earth is tilted, so we see it from a different angle, which means it looks like it's wobbly. And then, Howard, final comment, and we're moving on. This is your question. I'm done. I'm done. Sounds good. The spice is about to come in for you. So send in love, Howard. But Caucasian Sensation asks, Howard, your ignorance is intentional. The railgun projectiles, supersonic, bullets from a gun are subsonic. Speed is the reason Coriolis matters less. Seven times the speed of sound. They can shoot seven times the speed of sound. Two dollar super chat from Shane Cup. Didn't have anything tagged. If you have a question, feel free to send it in to me and I'll get it read. But thank you so much for the support. Five dollars from Ozon. Don't spread disinformation about cancer. I hope no one pays attention to the idea that cancer is caused by malnutrition. Yeah, that's been debunked. Uh, cancer is caused by many things, uh, but some doctors try and say it's a virus. So yeah, what cancer is and how cancer is caused, there's many, many, many causes. And um, I lost somebody last year to radiation therapy. So, yeah, I can, I can talk about it for hours. We can go into another debate another night on it. I've got no problem defending my stance. We, we get sick from different things, and cancer's like the, the final resort when your body can't cope anymore, like an, an, like an autoimmune disorder is when your body can't cope anymore. They, they've, they've got us believing in, believing in things, um, and we're, we're feeling guilty, and we're feeling that we're to blame for transmitting things to each other and stuff when really it's more down to are you being contaminated are you being harmed or are you not looking after yourself and yeah we can go into that another night I'm, i've got no shame talking about what i know and i'm not a doctor but it's five dollars super chat from big dumb movie the icebreaker of the night question for both which star wars trilogy is best Prequels, prequels Jar Jar or sequels and why? Prequels Jar 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 is the best. Darth Jar Jar, greatest character in any any freaking TV show ever. I like um I'd like to know why everybody remembers Luke I am your father, but it's actually not that. It's called the Mandela effect. That's and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Look into that. Look into the Mandela effect, how, how they've changed Luke. I am your father. And I think now it's something else. $5 super chat from Cano Anibus. For either, is daylight saving times affiliated with the recording of the anomalies? A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A-S. Anomalies. Anomalies? Or is that Analemmas? Alemmas? I'll say it again for five dollars for either. Is daylight savings time affiliated with the recording of Analemmas? A N A L E M M A S. I think I think uh, I was actually thinking about this so earlier. I was like, how do they know what time to take the picture with the daylight savings? It's a it's a very good uh, question. I'd like to look into that more myself. But, but I'm glad they brought it back up uh, because t Tom, Tom got lost on the figure eight thing. Forgetting that the sun and the moon both make figure eights, both make figure eights in the sky, 88 miles an hour, like in Back to the Future. 
Um, but also, why don't stars show any parallax throughout any time of the year, considering that we're tilted looking up at night time when we're on this side of the sun, and considering we're on that side of the sun six months later looking down, yeah, a different angle completely. We're looking east instead of west. We're looking up instead of down. Uh, how can we see the stars passing the same path in the sky no matter what time of year, no matter what year? We don't see any parallax like we do with the analemmas of the sun and the moon. Thank you for bringing that point back up. It is a very good point. Uh, it sounds like a really bad point. Like daylight savings is something made up by people for economic and farming reasons. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual sky. It's totally made up. It's totally arbitrary. It doesn't affect anything. He was asking about when would you take the picture for to get the moon analemma and the sun analemma because I'm supposing it's like the midday or I'm imagining it's when it's at the highest point in the sky that day. So maybe the time can vary, but when you can see it's at the highest point, you take a photo and you compare that photo over the year and you get a figure eight. And that's a really good proof that um, we're not just uh, in a magic uh, explosion of random space. We're actually in a world clock because everything's uh, precise and has been and always will be. And on that note, $5 super chat from Daniel D for Howard. Why are you a flat earth believer when Alden's theory disproves just about all the evidence you are presenting? You really should go back to watch my video in normal speed and you will clearly hear me say and show that I am not a flat earther. I am a globe skeptic with an open mind that earth might be multidimensional. So there could be truth to the globe. There could be truth to the con concave earth. And there's definitely a lot of truth to the flat earth reality that we all can perceive and measure but there are arguments to each model, which tells me that it could be a little bit of everything, just like we're assuming we're third dimensional, yet our thoughts, our emotions, where are they? Maybe we are fourth dimensional beings, but we only think and see in 3D, and maybe Earth and is, maybe the moon and sun is five dimensional, maybe Earth six dimensional or seven, heavens so maybe earth seven dimensional only the creator knows and anyone that claims to know otherwise is full of full of themselves because they might have a radio experiment and they can make assumptions on the rest of the world based off one reading just like finding a bone and saying oh i'm gonna make a whole dinosaur uh, out of plastic and say that you know it's, it's just the same crap over and over again little ants with big egos get over yourselves we're mere mortals five dollar super chat from shane cup how can oceans bend or display convexity upon their surface when the surface of large bodies of water at rest is always flat i guess that's for me I'm not a concave earther, but I have heard an argument that light bends. Even Tom agrees with me on that one. And um, the funny thing is, they say that light tends to bend upwards when uh, over long distances or over large bodies of water or something. I'd have to look back into the concave um, explanations. But they're saying that light bends around the curve downwards. The concave earthers are saying that light bends upwards. And that there are experiments to show this, so we would not be able to measure it in a sense because every tool that we use would would show flat. Um, but I've also heard of a uh, the best look. I'm not trying to say it's concave, yeah, but air pilots all agree that they maintain three degrees up throughout the whole duration of a twelve-hour flight. They never ever have to point down. Well, that is a bit interesting. Why don't they just stay flat? They have to stay three degrees up. A Concorde had to stay five degrees up and they're higher up and they're going even faster. So why don't they end up in space or hit the firmament? So there are arguments for the concave earth in 
pilots being three to five degrees inclined, light bending. And the other point was that they've dug down um, and measured the distance between two places and it was further when they dug down than when they were on the surface. But I haven't verified any of this and I don't know how accurate anything is, but there are many explanations for many models. Even Tom says there's unlimited uh, hy hypothesis. That's why, like Jim Bob says, we need to manipulate things to be sure. Otherwise, we should be more philosophical and keep an open mind, which surprises me when you think Tom's into philosophy, yet he calls us flirts. It's a bit inconsistent. What does being into philosophy have to do with calling you flirts? Well, isn't, isn't it like the opposite isn't the idea of philosophy to promote a uh, free thought and new ideas and experimentation and and to dive deep into things you sure. seem a little bit superficial when you call people flurfs it just doesn't match your at your behavior seems to change tom and this is the kind of conversation S science really isn't want. about this is the conversation i wanted you change character when you get into the globe lie uh, topic where well, i've seen you debating and having discussions with other people about the Afghanistan um, stuff that's going on. And I, I just have to mention none of, in that big group of people, none of you mentioned that the airplane looked and acted like an inflatable dud. But never mind that. You, you, you don't seem to question any official narratives. And when people do, you change character. You seem to go a bit immature and disrespectful. Nothing like conspiracy cats and flat earth, um, what's the name? Fight the flat earth and all them. But you do change character. And it just, it tells me that you've been triggered, mate. You've been triggered. We've all been programmed to react. And you've been triggered by that flat earth word in the, in the imagery to, to react childish and call people names when you don't do that in any other topic. You're very sincere in all the other topics. So that's my evidence, your behavior. What? Insulting, you, you can insult in philosophy. That's fine. Like philosophy doesn't mean you can't insult people. And insults are irrelevant to the argument. So philosophy is just about taking the arguments and addressing them. It has nothing to do with having to be nice. But when you're, when you're calling someone a flirt, you're not addressing an argument, mate. Come on, you, right, you just right. contradict yourself again. When I call someone that. stupid, it doesn't either, but it's irrelevant to the argument. So like philosophy doesn't say you can't insult people. It just says you have to take the arguments and treat the arguments as if they're arguments. Your the person's character doesn't matter. Changing. Your behavior changing is evidence that you've been triggered. You've been, you, you've suffered some kind of programming. That no. You, to react, you react differently the, on that topic than you do any other topic you debate. That's interesting. No. And on sound. that note, on that note, we are going to go from $5 super chat from Caucasian sensation Mach 6. Six times the speed of sound, 5,400 miles per hour going against a bullet at 3409 miles per hour fastest recorded yes coriolis matters less yeah but they don't take in curvature what are we talking about you, you want to talk about coriolis because you believe in it show me where people have actually worked out calculations show me where things have been affected by the Coriolis effect because the Red Bull skydive wasn't and that was three hours. So we're talking about the sound speed of sound not being affected by the Coriolis effect. Why does Felix Bautenberg or however you say his name manage to go up from New Mexico, chill out for three hours, spaced out yeah, for three hours and then he takes a leap of faith and lands back in New Mexico instead of landing in another uh, another state, another continent, or in the middle of the ocean, like NASA send their uh, rockets into the Bermuda Triangle, Tom. But, you know, you don't care. You've got your radio waves. <laughs> NASA sends rockets into the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Video killed the radio star, bro. And on that note, $5 super chat from Caucasian Sensation, Amy, T-Jump, and Howard. You've all done an amazing job avoiding a dumpster fire tonight. <laughs> Thanks to all three of you for the entertainment. Send in love, Caucasian sensation. And in, in fact, if you would like to see more of both of our interlocutors, their descriptions are in the link below. That's right, baby. And all right, $5 super chat 
from thank the most high God. And this is the last super chat that we have. So we're going to move into some regular questions before we wrap up the night. But if you want your burning desire question in right now, send those super chats. It'll move it right to the front of the line. But $5 from thank the most high God. Tom, explain seeing stars through the moon and sun and moon visible daytime? Question mark. Um, Airline pilots flying over the local sun when it is millions of miles away. Uh, light bins so we can see it partially like i don't think we can see we can't see stars through the moon but we can see some bins like at the sides of the moon just barely so that doesn't really islamic work. flag islamic flag islamic flag yeah the the fact where they show a picture that has the star behind it that's a bad picture like they do on the, like the kids like there's nine different official flags that all have the star showing through the moon but yes, it's, it's just a coincidence, right? It's just fashion. It's just fashion. Uh, well, it's, it's more of a mistake. It's, it's more of a, a scientific mistake. Um, but It looks cute. It looks cute, yeah. Sure. It's nice. <laughs> and all right, we're moving into some of <laughs> questions from viewers like you out there from WitTwit. Is Google Earth not good enough? I think he means for your pictures of the whole continent. Well, zoom out and you get to a part where it goes from being photos to a cartoon. Why is that, Tom? Do you know? Why do they need a cartoon for Google Earth when you get to a certain distance? Uh, because it's easier. Ah, oh, bro, someone had to draw a cartoon instead of just using a real photo when there's thousands of satellites out there. Come well, to, to be able to like click and drag and go around Come it, on. it's easier to use a 3D model than to try and get pictures from literally every angle because we don't have pictures from literally every angle. So a 3D model is easier and it takes less pixels and it does the same thing. <laughs> Our super chat coming in from Sky. Um, sure. Because I, I really wanted to mention that, you know, you say that science doesn't prove anything. It just shows it the greatest possible probability. Sure. Yeah. Yep. But, well, is, is that true? Because water has always been shown to wet things and heat has always been shown to dry things. But in your worldview, literally anything's possible. We just haven't seen it yet. Correct. So far, we agree, yeah? Uh, no, not literally anything is possible. Uh, and, like, in other words, you, you're saying, we'll go back to your official statement, science doesn't prove anything, it just shows the greatest probability. Right, like we could be in the matrix and everything we know could be wrong. Right, right. So, going off your logic that technically anything's possible because we're in a mate could be in a matrix yeah no, well not any like there couldn't be a round square in the matrix not anything is possible but like you know you're saying that science doesn't prove anything it just shows the greatest probability yet yeah. we've never seen water not wet something we've never seen heat not dry something so to me there are simple truths and reproducible evidence you could call a fact you could call proven but if you want to say that it's it, you know it's just the strongest evidence until proven wrong well going off your logic your world view yeah shouldn't we be scrapping obsolete theories when we see that they've been debunked with new information yeah we do that's but, why we got rid of the flat earth theory well no because we can see that the globe is a scam when we look at all the evidence that you don't care about so it shows that you have a lot of, uh, it, it costs you a lot of processing power to apply the logic that you claim that science doesn't prove anything, it's just the greatest probability and that, you know, everything's uh, up for interpretation, all absolute theories should get scrapped, yet you're not able to get rid of the globe model, even though we've got loads of evidence that NASA are faking it and that there's a lot of scientific reproducible evidence that's manipulated that goes stronger 
the, than your radio experiments lots of other experiments that we haven't even gotten into because as always we've got stuck on your radio which i think i think that's your big uh, big tactic get people on your radio and keep them there but hopefully <laughs> with the with the electromagnetic thing people get out of that one in the future uh yeah because and it's so the it sweet, Tom, wait, so he's yeah, gonna so it, because it's the simplest thing that anybody can do in their backyard to prove you false so if anyone can do an experiment in their backyard to prove you false that's usually the best example to go with uh, you have no evidence against NASA. All you've done is show that some pictures are are doctored with computer stuff, which doesn't have anything to do with whether or not the world is round. All it does is show that NASA uses computer-generated images. So that doesn't help your position at all. You've provided no evidence that the globe is false. You just provide false science and don't understand it. And so that's you're, you're right. We do. We would. We would get rid of the globe Earth model if it was proven false. Just you haven't. You just you haven't provided no evidence against it. We'll, we'll, and on we'll, that we'll, note, we'll, 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 we've got to move on from John Rapp because we got lots of questions. Keep on sending them in, loves, because we do appreciate them. But John Rapp asks, so the dome is 384,400 kilometers high? No idea. Question from Jared who asks a question for Howard. Does he realize how much of science has been wrong for the earth to be flat? How much of science has to be wrong for the earth to be flat? How much math also has to be wrong? Did, uh, if people go back to my video, uh, they'll notice that the math of the globe contains three sixes over and over and over again and where tom can laugh it off i'd love someone that's good at math or someone that's into betting to look into the probability of 666 appearing so many times in the mathematics of the globe and the heliocentric model because the heliocentric model meaning the sun god and sun worshippers like lucifer the sun bearer means that yeah the 666 mark of the beast would appear in the sun god uh, model it makes a lot of sense when when you look at it that way it doesn't make sense when you think it's just a coincidence because the probability of that number appearing so many times is google it's uh, ridiculous it's and actually Tom, you put an easy experiment in your back garden i've got an easier one still put two glasses of water and see how the moonlight chills the one that's in direct moonlight and manipulate it with the magnifying glass that doesn't cost thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars, mate. Cost you a thermometer and a glass of water. And it also Jeez. doesn't prove the world is flat or not round. Proves that it's got an electromagnetic uh, output of its own that would affect your radio no. waves. So no, no, it doesn't. Sorry, your experiments are uh, not it irrefutable liter evidence after all. Lit it literally doesn't really prove that. Triumph, literally the insult is. dog, yes. T jump is getting paid by NASA. How do I, I sign up wish. for an extra paycheck? <laughs> he gets paid with quick, um, what do you call them? Quick chats or whatever you call them. Super, super chat. chats? From NASA? <laughs> NASA doesn't give me super chats. I wish they gave me super chats. I don't know who gives you super chats, bro. I'm not trying to say you're a shill, but um, MC Toon seems to get some weird characters sending him super chats when we were talking. Question from Free Your Mind. It is not logical to conclude that eight planets are round and earth must be round or is it not logical to conclude that eight planets are round then earth must be round oh i hope that's for me yeah it is it's like why we see all the planets yay, are all round why is yay. the world round? and all your planets on nasa's website are perfectly round spheres yet our planet isn't a perfectly round sphere when you take away the agua it's uh, all deformed and even with the agua it's uh, kind of wider at the middle. Yeah, it's a little bit plump at the bottom, yeah? So how come our planet that looks perfectly spherical when we see pictures and videos of it where the clouds don't move, how come it looks perfectly spherical, yet we're told it's not perfectly spherical? We're also told that the ocean goes so deep that if you take the water off because the rain came after, uh, how come our Earth isn't like any other planet in the solar system that you guys believe in? It seems inconsistent. Tom. They're not, they're not perfectly round. Like, none of the planets are perfectly round. Question from Noel Z. 
What is a higher dimensional shape? Tesseract, for example. From Canna Wanabis, what do you get when you send radio waves at the sun? They bounce Wait. back. Question from Brad Beaker. Has any flat earth, has any flat earther released let me try to read this. Has any flat earther released ever even offered a consistent view of metaphysics and epistemology? So has a flat earther ever offered a consistent view of metaphysics and epistemology is the question basically. I don't know. I'd either have to Google or get a crystal ball. I can't speak on behalf of every flat earther and I'm a globe skeptic as well, but yeah. Question from <laughs> Iron Horse. How fast do radio waves propagate? Oh yeah, speed of light. So the moon earth relationship is like an infometer proving earth doesn't move. Inferometer? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't prove earth doesn't move. It just proves that the distance to the sun is the distance to the moon is the same. Like if the moon and the earth move at the same time, they could both be moving. From Howard. Why can, or for Howard, why can no one on earth see the far side of the sun, especially simultaneously on different hemispheres? Is this the boring argument that people have been having for the last five, six years about perspective? Are they saying, why can't I see the sun? Why is it nighttime? Why isn't it always day? Is it that argument that they're making, Amy? Uh, or is it you misunderstood it? If, if that's the argument, look into the laws of perspective, look into the idea that if the light source is smaller and it doesn't travel infinite, and I don't know, there's so many explanations for why we have nighttime and why the light wouldn't be seen when it's in a different area. It's, it's look into the basic flat earth stuff if, if you're starting off but i really recommend instead of watching people's videos just go and make an observation at water level uh like i showed in my video i think we haven't got into anything tom you've kept me on your radio crap um i can see 20 miles away at water level where i live and i've been to other places where i've seen even further but where i live i can see street lights 20 miles away street lights without any distortion on a clear day I don't believe that I'm seeing a mirage or light refracting refracting around a bend perfectly every time I see it. I am quite sure that we can see 20 miles away because we can see 20 miles away at any distance if the atmospheric conditions are clear. You need atmospheric conditions to prove light bends. I don't need atmospheric conditions to just prove I can see really far. I forgot what the question was, sorry. That's okay. We'll take that answer because a $5 super chat from thank the most high God, Tom, the sun and moon can be seen during daytime. Does this mean the other side of globe is in complete darkness? No, because there's light that you like, we have lights and stuff. Like, why would it be in complete darkness? Question from Laurento Densia. Wait, so if mosquitoes don't transmit HIV, then the germ theory is not real? Was that his argument? If the germ theory is real, it's very peculiar that it's not been proven in the hundred years that the pharmaceutical industry has been promoting it and squashing alternative therapies like the terrain theory logic that if you look after the temple the temple will look after itself you know watch what you put in you and watch the radiation and watch your negative influences and stress make sure you get sleep and rest clean water so it's it's all obvious the terrain theory isn't a theory if you look after yourself you'll stay healthier even if the germ theory is true you have to look after yourself to keep your immune system strong. People think that they can take a pill or a jab and that they can keep eating McDonald's and chocolate and drinking Coca-Cola and that they'll be fine. 
grow up. On that same, on that same vein, why would it matter if certain diseases can't be transmitted by mosquitoes when we know others can from sunflower? Wrong. We don't know that we can transmit disease. We can transmit an infection. Trust me, I've had chlamydia of a girl once. I understand that we can transmit infections, but a disease is personal. You personally got sick. And it's a sad thing when it's not your fault, when it's radiation that you can't see or smell, but you've been harmed in one way or another, whether it's a, you know, your fault or not. But we're blaming other people for stuff that's never been proven. And the only people that benefit from it are the pharmaceutical industries and now the governments because they can keep us all in fear and um, blackmail us to lock our industry down and then offer us a communist style system called Agenda 2030, as if they're the heroes when they're the ones that are breaking our economy. Sorry. Got some more super chats. Five dollars from Thank the Most High God. Tom, use that chair and Google pictures of stars through transparent moon. Surprise, you never heard of it. Uh, yeah, you can't actually see stars through the moon. Um, it's doesn't doesn't happen like you can they can bend light can bend around the moon and the corners on the sides you can't actually see stars through the moon Wrong. five dollar super chat from brian leak i tom aware light has been slowed to four meters a second under vacuum with extreme low temperatures i think what they're saying is is tom aware light has been slowed to four meters a second under the vacuum with extreme low temperatures. No, no, it's slowed by putting water and stuff in its way. Temperature doesn't affect the speed of light because it doesn't have mass. So having temperature wouldn't affect it. Another super chat from David can, can, Villar. Could I just add to that? Um, he's, you can, he's, and then he'll respond. And we'll go really ahead. quickly, you're saying that it doesn't affect the light or whatever's being illuminated because you, your understanding of light is an understanding but the medium that the light is traveling through contains water so i really appreciate that person's super chat or that person's comment because it's a very valid point that tom's just brushing off because of his understanding of light but even if his understanding of light is right there is water in the medium so he said in a vacuum, he said in the comment, he said in a vacuum. So no water. Yeah, but and we're talking about still... your radio. We're talking about your radio waves, bro. Video kills his, the radio. Get over he, his, he, his question in a vacuum, no water. Literally the opposite of what you said. And now we're moving forward. I still appreciate it because it makes a valid point to your radio wave experiment. $5. From David Villar, the moon is the same shape and face and size for everyone that can see it anywhere on earth at any time. No flatter perspective can explain it. Yeah, I heard Tom, Deb was it Tom or someone else was talking to that F.E. Um, Aussie? And he said, if you're looking at a reflection, like as if you're in a frozen pond, then everybody in that pond would assume that the sun or the moon or the light source, the reflection that they're seeing, is actually right where they're seeing it. But as we, Tom knows, a reflection is personal, isn't it, Tom? Wait, what was the question? A reflection is personal, isn't it, Tom? I don't know what that means. A reflection. In is other personal? words, if you see a reflection of sunlight in the water, it looks to you like it's coming directly at you and no one else. But to someone else stood in a different part of Earth or in a different part of the beach, they would see it looking at them. So we we have a personal perspective and we see things. Um, and well, shit, I was going to add another point with this. 
I mean, yeah, so light, light if reflects in, a, in. If you're in a pond and you're looking up and you're seeing a reflection of a light and you think that that's where it is, well, I also can go back to the electrons being multi places. It could also be a reflection. And um, uh, go on, say what you want to say, Tom, because I have something else on the end of my tongue. Right. So light, when it hits water, reflects in all directions. And so or hits like a mirror or anything. And so every person from where you're standing at, your eyes are going to receive the electrons from whichever direction it reflected to hit your eyes. So reflections look differently from every different perspective. But if like someone is standing right next to me, we're both going to see like the same reflection. Yeah. The, the point is when you see the moon, you might be seeing a projection either from a higher dimension or you might be seeing um, like the stars through the firmament, like a fish or someone that's swimming under ice in a pond would see a light source. Projections it can't reflect radio waves. The light source is there. They're just seeing a projection of the light source that's personal to their perspective. And we're moving on. Five dollars from David Lavar. When the sun sets or rises, it does not appear where the flat Earth model suggests that it would pe uh, that it would it says period of spirod especially during the winter months give me a second when the sun sets or rises it does not appear where the flat earth model suggests that it would i'm gonna assume he meant would appear especially during the winter months yeah it's um this is why we should keep looking into things but one other observation that's very very uh, easy to do um you can see when the moon's not full um that very often the alignment is not correct we'll see the let's say the top part of the moon illuminated when the sun is lower in our uh, point of view so on tom's model the moon is high above us and the sun is below our horizon or just coming above the horizon as we can see the top part of the moon illuminated and you think well why is this side at the bottom not illuminated there's a many many observations we can make where the the moonlight is not in correct alignment with the sun so it proves it's not a reflection but the best one is that put a glass of water in your garden you don't need thousands and you'll see that the moon does have electromagnetic properties of its own that would affect radio waves tom's interpretation is worthless we would literally be able to measure that if it was the case we can't measure it therefore it's not the case we can with a glass of water uh, <laughs> and the glass of water. Thermometer. Uh, we'll tell you what, get a wet surface like Ken Al Wheeler did. Get a wet surface and get the thermometer glasses, I forgot what they're called, and look at the surfaces, the wet surfaces or snow surfaces that are in shade and the ones that aren't in shade. And I'm not talking about being under a tree, I'm talking about a wall. The moonlight chills, mate, and you can keep laughing about it, but you're talking out of arrogance. I'm talking out of experience, and so everyone else that's saying it chills is because they've done the experiment. Not listen to Simon Dan's claim that we don't know what we're on about. Can you measure with anything other than a glass of water? You can do a wet surface or snow surface, and I you'll mean, like, see that like we, we have and... we have tons of different tools that can measure electromagnetic waves. Can any of them measure the EM waves of the moon? I haven't tried. I just know that it chills water. Maybe we're using tools that measure the kind of electromagnetic uh, frequencies that we expect from like sun and stuff. Maybe with the moon having different properties, we'd need different um, tools or, or different settings. I'm talking out of my butthole here. I'm just saying that you're making assumptions. I'm talking out of experience. Moonlight chills. Why? I don't know. How? I don't know. But it chills. Try it. Instead of just sitting in your chair and talking out of, uh, oh, from what you've read in a book or on a website, or what you remember from school. Well, oh. As soon as you can give me any do other the tool. Experiment, Tom. Wait, do the wait, wait, experiment. Well, as soon you as you give me reasons. any, that doesn't, that doesn't prove any electronic wave. So as soon as you can give me any type of tool, like scientific tool that can measure EM waves from the moon, that would be great. $30 question from Adam Alibi. Did you know Howard in, is it, G I don't think it's geometry, geometry, G-I-M-A-T-R-I-A -I -A is 222 equals, he actually linked Hebrew. Hold on, here we go, Google Translate, we can do this. Uh, 
Uh, wow, he did Hebrew for Howard. Okay, thank you, internet. <laughs> did you know Howard in geometry is two 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 equals Howard in Hebrew? Two, Multiply two, two. by the first surname letter. G equals uh, Hebrew alphabet that I should have learned from Hebrew school is three. Altogether, two, two, two times three equals six, six, six. <laughs> Just a coincidence, they'll tell us. I'll Maybe. leave it for you to think about. Could he do it on S because my surname's Stirrup? He doesn't have to do another super chat. <laughs> but just do it on S. I'm still interested. My surname's Stirrup. Thank you. And $10 super chat from Topic Discuss. Howard, how fast does the sun move around the earth? How fast does the moon move? Okay. Um, they might not move. We might be looking at a uh, personal, ah, that was my point. We might be looking, yes, thank you. Right, Tom loves his quantum theories, yeah? When you look at light, it reacts differently. Yes, Tom? Quick yes or no? Uh, you mean, no, when it's measured by a device, it acts differently. Is it a wave or a particle, Tom? It depends on your observation, no? It depends uh, on an observation. The measurement device. There's no actual, you don't look at it. It's a measurement device. It's not an observation of an eyesight. But there is some kind of effect that light ha light knows if you're observing it or not, with a tool or not. But it, yeah, it yeah has the, tool, effect, the right? tool causes energy to cause the wave to collapse. It is is a great interpretation, but the point is that if there's an observer, it reacts one way. If there's not an observer, if it's not being recorded, it is, it reacts another way. So my point is, when we're looking at the sun and the moon and stuff, not only might they be higher dimensional and like the quantum physicists say they're in multiple places or they're in that they're in everywhere at the same time, just like the other quantum theorists say that when we look at light, it reacts differently. Or da da. There's a lot to light that we don't understand, and there's a lot to these higher dimensional things, whether electrons or suns and moons and stars and planets, that might have a lot of uh, interpretations. But you're not manipulating anything unless you get a magnifying glass on that glass of water in your garden and watch the cooling effect get even cooler, Tom. You can't do that with your radio waves, bro, can you? You can't. How do you know, how do you know the glass of water isn't in multiple locations and you're actually just misreading the air? Because I've only got one glass of water in this light and I've got one in the shade. And, you know, like I say, water wets, uh, heat dries. Unless you can prove otherwise, I don't think it's a probability. I think it's a fact. $5 super chat from David Villar. Like I said, no flat earth perspective can explain it. That was hilarious fail. Oh, yeah. His question was about the, the, the speed. Okay. so. You believe that Earth magically speeds up and slows down when it's going around the sun. So what's so difficult about understanding that if the sun is moving, that it will uh, speed up and slow down at different courses? If it's got to go further out, it'll go faster. If it's further in, it's doing a shorter circuit or higher up. There are many explanations on the sun, moon and star app uh, from the Flat Earth application. There's loads of people in the Flat Earth 24-7 Discord group that can answer all of these questions if you're really interested or would like to have a respectful debate or conversation. Um, but my point is that these things can be debated forever. They can be argued forever. Everything's up for interpretation. Like Tom says, there's infinite hypothesis. So, like Jim Bob says, it's better that you can manipulate things so that you know that it's the independent variable. And even though Tom thinks that that's a probability, I'll stick with that independent variable until Tom can manipulate something otherwise. Thanks. $5 super chat from David last name. He's got a big one. I worked as a comms tech on a ship. We have line of sight and satellite communication systems. There is a limit to how far we can XMT and RCV signal in both. In line of sight, that limit occurs as the earth curves because the signal can't be curved. 
I suppose this is just a massive conspiracy instead of line of sight, meaning you lose sight and therefore the ability to communicate with other ships on the water. I've got a video of um, the chief of naval research saying that they could shoot over a hundred miles away, but even on five miles, there should be about five meters of vertical drop. That's an easy one. Can you prove that, Tom? Uh, or can anyone in the chat find five meters of vertical drop over five miles, please? Let's let's stop talking long yes. distances. Let's stop talking about radio waves. Because yes. we know that over five miles, there should be five meters of vertical drop. That should be so easily it is. demonstrated. It is. Oh. They did it with a laser on a beach with a boat. There's some YouTube videos. It's pretty funny where like if there was a flat earther on a boat and they had a laser and they showed it on a whiteboard. We're like, oh, it's actually measured to five meters. Shit. I'm so glad you brought this up because one of my points, you had some great points. We sadly got stuck on the radio waves though. Um, why did National Geographic fake curvature uh, with the boat in a lake when you can clearly see the horizon is far in the distance behind them. And why did this show Genius with Stephen Hawking also fake curvature over a lake using a helicopter over they, a distance they didn't. of seven, if I just finished, seven miles, not even seven miles, six miles, and they claim that the whole helicopter went below the horizon. Yet I've just shown you that everyone that comes to Benidorm, which is in Spain, you get a nice suntan, yeah? You can see 20 miles away every day, and at night time, you can see the street lights perfectly. No problem. 20 miles away. So your little helicopter with Stephen Hawking and your little boat with the horizon in the background prove that they're lying because they went through multiple people that were there doing the experiments, went through editors, went through producers, and you're telling me that two big shows release rubbish and you don't think that this is a bit suspicious? Uh, Show they, me five they meters over five miles, please, Tom. He's gonna they both got it right. We're moving on. They, they both got it right. They weren't wrong. You're just mistaken. I've just told you. And there we go. You can I... see the horizon in the background. You're just but... telling me things. I'm telling you evidence. No. Question from Triumph the Insult Dog. Wait, flat earthers have done experiments? What are they? Uh, well, we've checked that moonlight can chill water. We've checked over long bodies of water uh, that you can see further than the geometrical horizon would allow you to, because if light was bending, it would distort and we don't see distortion on a clear day. We can see way too far. We can shoot um, way too far. We can, um, we've done loads of experiments. We, we, we've, we've taken, look, people have put hot air balloons with cameras and send them up like 30 to 40 kilometers and we're looking at rivers and lakes and they look damn similar to how the iss shows these rivers and lakes when it's going over them so uh, tom would have to tell me the exact distance but i think it's like supposedly 200 miles or whatever that they say the international space station's up like really for 400 miles it's really high up yet the imagery from the international space station looks very similar to what we see from all hot air balloon footage. Even the ones with fisheye lens. Look at the size of the rivers and lakes, guys. We're being lied to and it's blatantly obvious when you can swallow your pride, Tom. Well, I gave you an example where you could prove it in your backyard and you're just ignoring that, trying to bring up no, pictures. No, you could prove in your backyard that a glass of water chills and that, you can... That has nothing... That's proven, that's proven on the globe Earth. That proves the globe. The world is a globe. So that, that proves the globe is a world. That proves the world is a globe. Like, that doesn't help Fantastic your Fantastic transition. $50 super chat. So much love. Thank you so much for the support. From Topic Discuss, I placed a glass of water outside and tested the temperature of the water during the different moon phases, including under a full moon and under a night sky with no moon. Howard, what would you predict is the change in the temperature of the water? Right, I've heard that argument from some YouTuber that put out a video and made this little argument and everyone's just parroting the same little argument. It doesn't make any sense. Where is the moon during the full moon? Sorry, at what time is the new moon above you? 
Huh? A lot of people don't even know their own model, do they? The new moon is above you in the middle of the day. So how are you going to see what effect the moon has on water at night time when the moon is above you in the middle of the day during the new moon? You have to do it either at the full moon or within a few days of the full moon. They call it the wanning phase. And it's really great because you put a glass of water out in the light, you put another glass or two or three or four glasses of water in shaded areas, all unsheltered so that Tom can't run back to his little explanations for excuses. And you verify that the ones that are shaded don't change temperature, while the ones that are in the moonlight decrease in temperature. And just for one last time, you take a magnifying glass and you manipulate that baby until you're sure that it's gone down even more. And I tell you what, when you've manipulated it, you've really got to swallow that pride, Tom, because your little radio waves that cost thousands for people to verify and don't manipulate nothing are secondary information compared to the primary information that we can get from manipulating that moonlight does chill. Which... Until, you verify, until you verify it with personal experience, you're just full of assumptions, inexperienced assumptions. Well, that so still proves the world is round. So, like, it. that's Let's true, and the world is Let's round. Talk again, when you've checked it, Tom. Let's well, no, I again. can grant it's true. That still proves the world is round. Like, the, the, you keep giving examples that the world is round and saying, "Oh, look, this example that the world is round shows that you're wrong." Like, I don't know why you keep bringing an example that proves the world is round for us. Like, it doesn't help your case. Mm -hmm moonlight chills doesn't prove which still it. proves the world is round like that, that doesn't help you that's not evidence for the world being not round if moonlight chills then it means that the moon is not a rock reflecting sunlight orbiting us in outer space or now inside our atmosphere slightly no so it doesn't show that at all and it all, even if that was true it still wouldn't show the world isn't round so none of that would support your case the only argument you brought forth doesn't do anything to support your case it's not the only argument tom it's just one argument against your little radio waves which doesn't work against the radio waves either. Like yes, this doesn't does. support anything. How, how does it that? Does. No, it loads doesn't. Of people from, loads of people have sent in chats saying that it would because it can affect the medium. It could electromagnetism, nope. like you said, would affect the radio waves. Nope. Just because you haven't measured the a type of electromagnetism doesn't mean that it doesn't give electromagnetism. Uh, we know you can't that measure the water. EMP or it doesn't. Large bodies of water and agriculture. So you know. What are you on about? You can't manipulate gravity, but you're telling me the moon doesn't have electromagnetic properties, yet we know that it has an effect on things. Which, again, so, not, none of this experiment shows that anything I said was wrong, so it doesn't help you at all. Your and all right, guys. Are based on a solid physical rock in the blue cheese in the sky. And no, remember, remember I said cheese, it doesn't matter what the sun, moon is. It would remember, affect your radio waves. It doesn't, so your... it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because, again, if the measurement is the same distance, no matter what you're measuring, doesn't matter if it's... Measuring, which it doesn't, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. It doesn't matter if you're measuring sea potatoes and green onions or magical leprechauns. If the measurement is the same distance from every point and we can always see the moon, the world is round. It doesn't matter. We could but be measuring, measuring a 5D you're not object. Measuring distance. You're not physically measuring nothing. You're, you're, you're measuring the time it takes for radio waves to bounce back to you. That's that how is distance, distance works. That's, not, that's speed. That's, that's distance. That's, that's, that's distance. distance in power. That's distance. No, it's yes. distance when you know your variables, Tom. You don't know that's the variables because you've never been. The speed never measures the distance. Moon. That's so, how radar works. What I'm saying. We don't want to radar. Have to let radar just, is a thing. Uh, radar is a thing. Okay. So, Howard, yeah, yeah. finish your point, and then Thank we're going to move Thank on to the lightning round. We know the conditions that radar is used in because we're here. We can physically measure things and manipulate things down here. You haven't been to the moon physically. You haven't measured it. You have only recorded a speed of a radio wave. So get out of it, your ego and admit that you haven't measured nothing. You've recorded a speed that could be affected by multiple variables. Thank you, Amy. Radio wave. And all right, guys, we're going to go. We still have a ton of questions, but I want to start pulling it all together. So we're going to try and do them nice and piffy. Okay. Jared A. asks, how do volcanoes and earthquakes work on a flat earth? Don't know if it's flat, but there are loads of people looking into volcanoes. I can't remember the, um, the name. Um, but yeah, there's lots of people looking into volcanoes and oil and lots of things. There's many, like Tom says, there's infinite hypothesis. 
But at the end of the day, we're better off just sticking to primary observations and things that we can manipulate ourselves. Like radio waves. You can't manipulate radio waves, Tom. Yes, you can. We can do it in lab. We can literally do that. Yeah, but not with the moon. Not to the moon and back. You can't, bro. Yes, so. you literally can do that. You literally can't, bro. I've, I've literally done it myself. So you say, but you're not Question. showing us anything. From Rat Prophet, if the Earth is flat, why haven't people reached the edge of the Earth and fallen off? Antarctic Treaty is the quickest answer I can give you. You're not allowed to go. A follow-up to that, what's on the other side of the world if the Earth is flat? It's in my video. It's a shame Tom sped it up so fast. Um, if the Earth is flat, there could be an underworld there could be um there's so many there's infinite hypothesis but there are scientific experiments that prove that at the right frequency boats can uh, get buoyancy and uh, you, there could be an alternative reality in an underworld that wouldn't know it's the underworld because their up would be up and their down would be down so yeah there are experiments that can explain and demonstrate that these worldviews could exist go back to my video global fanaticism and watch it in normal speed and a lot more things will make sense i think he's been Thank watching you. too much pirates of the caribbean mm. question from shane Ken from kentucky how does the radio experiment prove that the earth is a globe uh, so again if you measure an object away from anything like, so if you imagine this is the camera lens above the piece of paper, it's one length from this corner, but it's significantly farther away from this corner. So if there is a person standing on each corner and they're measuring the distance, this person's going to measure it really close. This person is going to measure it really far. But we measure the distance to the moon from the earth, the same distance every time. So if a guy's here, he measures it this far away. If a guy's here, he's measured it this far away. But that's not possible if the, there's like the if the world is flat because if the moon's over here this guy will measure it to be a really far and long away this guy will measure it to be really close so the only way for everybody on the earth to measure it the exact same distance is if it's like curved and it's moving like this then it will always be about the same distance away from the earth the entire time and everybody will measure it to be the same distance from the earth if it's like this it can't happen if it's like this it can't happen it has to be, you have to be stuck right there so the only way that the everybody can measure the moon to be the same distance from the earth the entire time is if the world is round. $5 super chat from Sasha Proctor. Howard, what is the ultimate goal of the government slash people creating this round earth conspiracy? What does it all lead to? Mind control. If you watch the global fanaticism video in normal speed, that's the whole point of it. We're easier to control when we're being deceived. Spirals work as a great tool to get people into a hypnotic trance because you steal their focus, they're dizzy, they're confused, they're um, there's no, disorientated. So we've had three spirals installed into our subconscious mind from a young age. And these three spirals, especially if they are not true, are having an effect on all of our worldview, our perspective, our understanding, the decisions we make. It makes, it makes us more susceptible to other um, deceptions and manipulations. So government means to con govern, to control, meant the mind, meant it. So if you want to control people's minds and stop them from ever rebelling, then you want to make them think that they're free. So if you put them on a model that theoretically you walk in a straight line, you come back to the same place, you can't go out of here because you need rockets. And then you tell people that we're spinning. Like I said, we've got the spirals and we're, we've got no direction. We're just totally going around the Milky Way and that we're in an infinite space. So we're infinitely irrelevant. So this is supposed to be a short answer. Um, yeah, so we're in an invisible prison. We're in a zoo. We're animals in a zoo and we don't even realize we're in a zoo because we don't see the bars of our prison because the bars of our prison are mental. And we don't realize that we're more susceptible to mind control 
by the people that govern our minds because we've been installed of such a young age spiral. So yeah, that's, that's probably it. Another giant $30 super chat from Adam Alibi. Send in so much love again. Uh, this is a follow-up to his last. Did you know Howard in Gmetra is 222 two, two equals Howard? Stirrup equals 365. First digit is three. All together, 222 two, two times three. 666. Six, six. <laughs> Evil. 365 days a year. Just a coincidence, they'll tell us. Wow. Another I don't believe in year. coincidences. Five dollars super chat from David Lavar Villar Flatter, third stop lion. You're using a cover over your moon temperature experiment, relying on relying on ambient heat to make the covered water warmer. Unsheltered shade. I'm very careful with what words I use. And I made the memes, especially with a garden wall between two glasses, unsheltered. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the last person for coming back to me on my name. I really appreciate that, even though it's horrifying. Um, I don't know what numbers mean i just know that numbers have an effect just like um the way we spell and say things just good vibes bad vibes we see that um frequencies affect uh, matter in cymatics experiments we see that emotions and words that we say affect rice cooked rice that's been left in a jar i'm sure you like this one amy um you speak nice to one rice you ignore one rice and you uh, speak horrible to the other rice and you watch the effect over a month or two the, the one that you speak nasty to will rot a lot faster than the one you ignore and the one you ignore will rot faster than the one you speak nice to and tom can laugh all he wants but this is science this is called manipulating a variable trying and experimenting something practically with personal experience so people can laugh because they've been told that this is hocus pocus this is this this is that and you know, you're just sticking to your beliefs. And at the end of the day, science is about testing things, Tom. $5 super chat from Sefren. How can an earthquake happen in Japan? And seismologists can detect the earthquake waves on the other side of the earth if it's flat. Look at cymatics experiments. I just said it, but I'll say it again. Look at cymatic experiments. The vibration goes throughout the whole plate. Question from Christopher Ben Yeshrel. Are light waves and sound waves the same? Answer T-Jump. No, sound waves are pressure differentiations in matter. Light waves are radiometric or electromagnetic waves. So they're not the same as sound waves, no. So we have two kind of similar to questions right after the other from Gay Nomadic. So Hollywood is responsible for a globe Earth. And then Kermit Kemet says, so Hollywood has been in existence for hundreds of years. So we'll start. So Hollywood is responsible for a globe Earth? Hollywood. Harry Potter's magic wand was made from wood from the holly tree. They like to cast spells on their audience by getting your attention. Entertainment to enter, tain to hold, meant, as we've previously discovered with government, is mind. So to enter and hold somebody's mind. Yes, Hollywood is evil and um, Hollywood's name says what they were invented for. And so, then it, yeah. was it in existence for a hundred years? I, I know that the Hollywood sign has been put on uh, hills that really reflect a part of, uh, is it Italy or Sicily? It's called Diana's Lake or something, or Diana's Mirror. You'd have to look into this. 
and it's where there's been lots of satanic rituals and um, di different dark uh, things to do with witchcraft and magic throughout history. So yes, uh, Hollywood did exist in either Italy or Sicily before, and um, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of dark occult uh, history that we we aren't aware of. But like uh, the Statue of Liberty could be Lucifer or Helios. That there's a lot of stuff that people really should look into, um, and and where to start is is difficult when your search results are all biased. Um, but get onto the Flat Earth Discord, uh, Flat Earth 24 Discord, and, and people will point you in a lot of directions if you're interested. Got another 50 follow-up super chat from Topic Discuss. Sending so much love for all of you out there for supporting the channel. Howard, when I put a glass of water under the moonlight in the shade and a separate glass, same night, out in the open, not under shade. The temp of both glasses of water measured the same. Why did they measure the same temperature, Howard? Maybe uh, you're doing it before the full moon, or maybe your thermometer isn't accurate enough. Try using a magnifying glass, the bigger the better. Um, the, the best one I saw was where someone took an old TV screen and it was like huge and really, really good so, so that it definitely caught enough of the moon. But yeah, if you can get a big enough, uh, strong enough magnifying glass, then you'll manipulate, manipulate the effect and know for certain that Tom's radio waves are not really that strong. And sending a shout out to our Discord channel, which is where many of us go afterwards and have even more debate fun, the link of which is into chat. But we got another $5 super chat from David Villar, bring in the spice. Howard talks cult like. Yeah, I was a Freemason that, um, for three, three years. I became a Master Mason. And um, I know how serious people take it. And uh, I left when I realized that the grand architect of the universe, as they call God, isn't the creator of earth and life. Because if the universe is not what we've been told, then that means the grand architect of it is the great deceiver. So I, anyone out there that's a Freemason, I can say from experience that you're being um, lured into uh, maintaining secrecy and holding a platform that only allows evil to thrive. We don't need secrecy anymore. Um, we're not, well, at the moment, we're not under tyranny. I was in a cult. I had been brainwashed. I was looking for answers. I thought I went into the, something that was less dogmatic, and it turns out it's more dogmatic, and that there's new orders, side orders, new degrees, external orders, there's many secret societies that benefit from the platform of Freemasonry. So if I sound a bit cultish, then I'm sorry, but we're all being indoctrinated into different uh, beliefs. And the popular culture, pop culture, is a pop cult of its own. So uh, yeah, just make your own primary observations. Don't believe me. I could be a shill. I could be uh, confused. Just take what people say and try and verify it. You don't need thousands like Tom. Just get a glass of water and leave it in the moonlight. And if it doesn't work, try it under the full moon or the wanning phase and use a magnifying glass. Thank you. Question from Rat Prophet. If the earth is flat, why haven't people reached the edge of the earth and fallen off? Antarctic Treaty, please pay attention. It's I been think, there yeah. for 60 years. No other treaty has managed to survive so long. And uh, not even Richard Branson or uh, Jeff Bezos has been over in an aeroplane or a hot air balloon. So if nobody's ever crossed the Antarctica, even in an aeroplane, helicopter, hot air balloon, then please don't ask me to go the Antarctica. I'm not Richard Branson. I think somebody already asked that. I don't own my own island because I'm not a pedo. Sorry. I just through that. Yeah, anybody can go to Antarctica. You can buy a ticket. The Antarctic Treaty doesn't stop you at all. Yeah, on a guided tour, Tom. No, like you can literally just go yourself. No, you, you buy a ticket can. and go yourself. Question from Shane from Kentucky. How does the radio experiment 
prove that the earth is a globe? I already explained that. I already answered too. Like, are you asking the same questions you got before? Nobody's. Um, no, don't think so. I'll keep on going though. Uh, they may be follow-ups, but I'll go Jared A. How do tides work? Is this for me? I bet. Cool. Well, you know how people say the moon affects water? Da-da, it still affects water no matter what model you're on. And uh, if we were on a flat Earth, then, yeah, the sun and the moon would have um, an effect on, on everything that's underneath it. So there would be water bending, or spiraling one way and spiraling the other way in, in what we call the other hemisphere. So, yeah, there are loads of explanations and uh, there are things that we can test and uh, the moon does have an effect on water, no matter what model you believe in. $10 super chat from Silver Harlow. Howard, when are you getting these non-historic etymologies of words? Also, Lucifer was the name of Venus, not the sun. Yeah, I know Lu uh, Lucifer is Venus, the, um, what do you call it, the morning star. Sun is Helios and Ra. Um, I can't remember all the astrotheology. Technically, every planet and um, sun and moon are demigods or different um, different flavors of the possibly the they're all fallen angels or, or they're all different um, frequencies of of the same. You know, I don't I don't know. There's many ancient interpretations. Did, did um, these energies or light sources, uh, angels, angles of light, manifest in, in reality and physically do things in history? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I just see a lot of artifacts throughout history and um, a lot of things that uh, match up. You know, you see the same looking bird face winged uh, walking people in the um south america as you do in um oh, i think it's assyria or something so you, you see the same carvings in different parts of the world of the same creatures the same um angels demigods do we see uh we see so much in the construction that is too perfect to just be chiseled away or by primitive beings so we jump on the idea that aliens came and constructed everything well, maybe aliens are actually interdimensional beings that the religions call demons or jinns. I don't know. I just see evidence everywhere, and I'm not buying that it's all bullshit because we can't build like they can. They, they did. Five dollar super chat from Design Song, Howard. You figured out all of NASA's lies, ICBM, etc. Why have you not been offered a job by rival space agencies, China, Russia, Mexico, or South Korea? I think that this whole pandemic um, has come about maybe a bit earlier than they wanted it to. Originally, it was called Agenda 21, but now they're calling it Agenda 2030. I think that the whole world's waking up to a lot of deceptions, some of them being the pharmaceutical some of them being the telecommunication uh, radiation dangers. And a lot of people realizing that we've been kept in a zoo all of our lives, mentally and uh, physically. So yeah, people are waking up. They've caused another distraction. So no space agency wants me because it's too late for all that now, guys. Your globes fall into pieces and uh, we're heading towards communism because it's the only way they can keep us locked down in an actual prison, a smart city, because the invisible prison, to end this, the invisible prison that we've been kept in is crumbling. So hence why Agenda 2030 is coming around. Look into it. It's on the United Nations website, communism. Question nothing. from James W. If I leave my beer outside overnight, Will it be cold? <laughs> I've got to try that one. Try with a pint of Guinness because it tastes horrible when it gets warm. Question from Sephrin. How would cold moonlight 
prove the earth is flat anyway. Doesn't prove that the earth is flat. The mission that I'm on, the whole uh, activism campaign that I jumped on a caravan and went around the uh, part of Europe, I just did the Spanish part in um, Portugal. Globe lie. I am a globe skeptic. I do not preach any beliefs because I don't have any beliefs. And I dare anyone, I challenge anyone to quote me preaching a belief. I just acknowledge evidence that is out there and I will stand by biogeology as the strongest explanation with the most evidence for what we see because I don't believe in the water and mechanical erosion that we've been taught to believe in as the explanation for everything that we see. So I'm a globe skeptic looking for more evidence and better information. I will not stand by one experiment like people like Tom do or like, um, I won't stick to the books that I read in a school or in university. I will keep testing everything I can and listening to people because even if they're wrong, I could understand their arguments or understand why they're wrong better by encouraging respectful um, comparison of evidence and discourse. And so we're going to go for about 30 more minutes, guys, and then we're going to uh, let the... Uh, I'm ready to, I'm ready to wrap to... up. Yeah, it's been going All right. So uh, then it sounds like we are then going to wrap up now. So I'm going to ask this last super chat, and then I'm going to give them their outros, and we're going to head out. But it has been a fantastic and lovely debate. From thank the most high God, everyone's asking Howard where is the edge but i'm asking tom and ball believers have you been to space do you plan on going how much longer yes i've personally been to space i built a spaceship in my backyard and i've been to space therefore you're wrong amy i don't mind staying a little bit longer if you want to ask tom any questions on that are directed to him i don't mind staying in I'm reading this name. last because David last name. I feel bad for the super chats. Who gaff? Who gaff? If the Earth is flat, who would you rather have a beard with? A beer, globe nerd or Howard? Answers Howard. Sorry, bro. The Earth is round. Let me try that one more time. Who gaff? G A F. If the Earth is flat, who would uh, you rather give, have give a beard a with? Give A F. Give A F. Oh. There we go. See, that was my IQ test. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube censors. <laughs> Who'd you rather have a beer with, Globe Nerd or Howard? Answers Howard. Sorry, Blow. The Earth is round. Can I answer that, or is it for Tom? I uh, said the world is round. So I I would imagine it's for you. Okay, because I well, if anyone really is interested. Check out some of my older videos from about three, four years ago when I was going around, like I say, doing the Globe Lie tour in Spain and in Edinburgh and Scotland and that. You'll see that the majority of the uh, reactions I get, because I'm not talking to internet, uh, you know, keyboard warriors. I'm not talking to mega mouth microphone people sat on their chairs that feel overconfident because they've got some, uh, you know, proofs we can prove it yeah no, you got you got some explanations got, and you got one, got proofs. Right, one observation so i go proofs. out and i talk to real people and uh, if anyone checks out my old videos they'll see that people have great conversations with me and we have some really good times and some good laughs and i, I don't want to debate i don't want to argue with people i like to compare evidence and i like to listen to other people's ideas and and uh, i think it's a really good conversation it's a very good field of research to 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 indulge in because if if you don't know if your worldview is distorted then are your thoughts really your own and all right i want to thank both t jump and howard for joining us today on our flat earth debate i'm going to hand it off to t jump to tell us where you can find him and his final thoughts uh yeah uh final thoughts are wow flat earth is dumb but uh, check out my discord tjump.io slash discord if you want to be a mod sign up to the patreon five dollar level you can host conversations invite people to chalk do whatever amas please join my discord because that's what i've been promoting lately and yeah thanks guys see you later
Thank you so very much, T Jump. And with that, we're going to hand it off to you, Howard. Where can people find you? And what are your final thoughts? I really appreciate this opportunity. And um, if anyone would like to find more of my work, they only have to search my name, Howard George Stirrup. I've got accounts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I don't use much. My TikTok's doing pretty well. Uh, I've put a lot of stuff on there. And uh, obviously YouTube, Library, Rumble, and BitChute is good because a lot of the videos that get censored off YouTube I put on BitChute, where you can see how, uh, how much pedophilia is being peddled through mainstream media to normalize and desensitize this public to it. The same people that promote the globe and stuff, you know, sickos. Thank you so very much, Howard. And with that, I want to thank you all for joining us on Modern Day Debate. We're a neutral platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for more juicy debates in the future, don't forget to like and subscribe, including tonight's debate on Flat Earth. I want to thank our two interlocutors, T Jump and Howard for joining us tonight. And if you liked anything that either of our guests said, both of their links are in the description below, along with our Discord, which is where we will be heading after the show. With that, I'm Amy Newman with Modern Day Debate, and we hope you continue to have great conversations, discussions, and debates. Night, everyone. Thanks, guys. Peace out. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Amy. All right. Let's turn my game on to the final level. Get some get some dessert. Probably get a frosty. Yes, four sound on. Test it. All right. There you go. Now you guys can hear the sound too. Final boss fight. Let's go. Cutscene is dumb. Fishy. Got here as quickly as I could. Who shall be fit? This is live stream. I do live stream. I think I'm gonna try to do that more often.
Gotcha. <laughs> oh, the flat earth guy? No idea. I shall keep coming back. Oh yeah, my camera's not as you was. Ooh, camera. Boss fight destroyed. Blast. I... <sighs> Bye. By my father's name. I am currently live streaming. I'm, definitely, I'm probably going to live stream all my stuff from now on because I'm too lazy to actually re upload it. Time to fish. Live streaming is probably better. Fish. Got a bite. Yep, that's a trout. <laughs> Once more, tenacious Zagreus achieves his lofty goal. And just as every time before, except with some sort of new twist of fate, perhaps, he goes a little distance, <laughs> then he dies. Alright guys, I'm gonna head out, get some dessert, go to Wendy's. Peace out, I'll see you.